support synergies like Pickaboo and Score were able to do so quickly. Loons is a big problem for CJ, especially as we get to that high level of competition in the Gauntlet and playoffs. Yeah, I'm very curious. Of course, CJ's strength still lie in their late game team fighting. It's about their survival in the laning phase and then their ability to utilize multiple globals here. Could have a contest over Shen here in the draft since that's come back in. Shy returns to that longtime comfort pick. Azir will be banned by Frozen. Maybe they're just trying to set up this Victor pick from CJ in the first round and go back to the Echo. Interesting to see if we do see Echo bans coming through from CJ Antis. You're probably not expecting so, but KT didn't either, and then they were forced to ban him by the third game against Diane. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I am a bit curious about that Echo At least ban on blue side. Yeah, that is very interesting, but with Tucson being so strong on that Italy, maybe they want to take away an early game jungler and have Tucson kind of take over the ganking part of the laning phase. You'd think that someone like Ambition, who's a bit hot and cold on picking up new champions, to respect it this much might be an indication of his solo queue performance, because again, never seen a professional game from Ambition on Elise. He's never been in the meta since he started hitting that jungle in 2015. Okay, so what will the last ban here be? It will be the Twisted Fate. I'm intrigued that they hmm. don't want to pick it up because that is a great champion for Coco. And he has certainly shown his prowess on the TF. So what will it be, I am? Braum is available. Shen, you mentioned, That's... is going to be contested. Does he actually feel pressured, Frozen? Look, Frozen's played a lot of Victor. Given that he's so comfortable playing against it, is this just a flash, or will they just go for this no. Victor first pick? I think that... If you ban Azir, you have to take the victor. Coco is extremely good at both of these champions. There's no point to banning the Azir otherwise. So Shen and Rek'Sai, the early hovers, pretty logical choices for CJ Antis. And again, if we think about how IM has been playing, they've been playing with Teleport out of both mid and top lane. Get two globals for Shine now. I think this is a very good draft for them and ensure that you will be able to answer their ganks. But the question is, we look at the bans. Azir is banned away. Rungle of Ezreal effectively banned, but no longer in the meta is a more simple thing. Shen is actually not picked up. They do go for the Braum as a priority. The big question becomes, where does Coco go with his champion pool? Because we're talking about basically all the champions he's been playing recently. Yeah. And I'm he's expected to be the carry threat if they do go for the Shen anyway. How is he going to create pick pressure with Twisted Fade out, with a lot of those meta champions gone? I mean, it might have to be an ultra last pick, but given the Korean sniper status of Coco, is it going to be the Jace? Is that actually where he's going to go? Uh, could be. Um, I'm, I am curious uh, as to where they go. I think that Jace Kogma with a Braum would be quite strong. Mm -hmm. So they're setting themselves up for success in that way. Uh, the Braum early pick is interesting because everyone else has deep prior to prioritize that champion now that Runeglaive has been nerfed and Ezreal is not going to be using that anymore. It was important to get first because it was a counter to that champion. Sure. Uh, CJ this week on this patch still putting a lot of faith in it and it will be the Shen takeaway alongside the Janna. So space does go back to the Kog'Maw. I think that gives you a window as to why they prioritize this from. Space is 6-0 and on Kog'Maw so far this season. It's been a big pickup for CJ Antis. Coco is the primary carry for this team, much like when we see Faker for SKT. He's the one that draws all the aggro. So it's been much safer to have space free hit in the back line with Shen ults, with the peel of Braum. And then because he has such the range and Trinity Force, excellent at procking the concussive blows passive from Braum. So it's a very strong laning choice. And Coco, maybe he'll have to go a bit more passive and go for the wave clear in Orianna. Surprised to see him actually pick up the champion so early. He does have a red side last pick, but... Maybe they're just leaving it over to Shy. Yeah, I, this, this may be some crazy things for Shy here. Kind of exciting. No Maokai ban yet. And it will be... Mm -hmm. If Shy plays Fizz, oh wow. Ooh, okay. This is... Uh, we've seen it before, but he played a Cinder Hulk Fizz, and it was terrible. It was a very bad pick for him. I was not impressed by his Fizz whatsoever, but they will take it into the Shen. So saving that AD carry for last, Vayne immediately locked in for Aurora. Champion, he played a lot in conjunction with Frozen's Varus. 
earlier in the season. Honestly, pretty safe against this lineup. It's weird to say with a Fizz, but it's going to be a top Fizz, probably an AD variant of Fizz, so less burst potential there. And Orianna, Rek'Sai, Braum, not really worries for Vayne, so it's a pretty overall safe game for Vayne. Probably going to still see the Cogmore come out from CJ Entis, but surprising to see the Fizz, especially from a player like Shy, you just don't really associate with uh, the Fizz shenanigans. And it's also not the Maokai matchup that's so landslide in the advantage, most of the time, of course, for Fizz. Yeah, I am I am a bit surprised. Of course, the tower diving potential for Fizz does go down when you have to deal with the Shenton. Lee Sin will be the lock for Tucson. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that Vayne Gragas has a lot more synergy than a Lee Sin does and gives you a form of primary engage that you are currently lacking. You don't really want to rely on insect kicks to engage with your team composition, but yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't take Gragas here, honestly, Baba. CJ Antis have left their AD carry to last pick. Cogmore's the frequent hover, and I think they need the damage. Oriana's damage can be flashed out. I would send some Oriana players beat big damage threats in the late game. We still can't guarantee anything about the Fizz, so I think you need the damage output. As you mentioned, the engage is not really there, so a relatively safe game from Cogmore, and it just Bit of a scattered draft from both teams, but I'm actually liking what I am have put together. Yep. And we saw this yesterday in Koo versus Jenner. Three straight games with no one picking primary engage. And guess what we're seeing again, Papa Smithy? This game with the Kogma locked in, Fizz. No one has a reliable form of engage here. And I was watching the VARs, they're very low kill games, a lot, lot of priority on the Dragon, of course, because whichever of these teams monopolize the Dragon, the combat mechanic's not really there. Once you get the warding, once your pick champions are just that much stronger and you don't have that backline engage, it leads to these very long, drawn-out engagements. So, strange to see that happen so consistently this patch but it's definitely been the story of the last couple of days yeah well on a patch like this that kogma brahm combo is extremely valuable because there's like you're saying there's the initiation no, kogma yeah the initiation kogma and there's just no way to get to the kogma how does i am expect to get on top of him tuzin's going to have to do a hell of a job on lee sin and have the Shen on top of him in order for that to happen, or Frozen's going to have to flash and try and burst the Kog'Maw down. The same story though for CJ Entis, like Shy has more abilities to hop, skip, and jump past tanks, but Vayne also relatively safe. Super high damage hyper carries in the back line, and theoretically one of them gets ahead, gonna keep getting ahead and just be massive. I'm really surprised that the Maokai didn't come through for CJ Entis. Maokai with the Orianna Ball would have provided a lot of initiation potential. But instead, they like the Fizz matchup, it would seem. We're going to get into game one and see if it works out with the Shen versus the Fizz. Welcome to IM versus CJ game one here. Of course, CJ fighting for playoff seeds. They would love to move up in the standings compared to KT Rolster and attempt to skip a best of five come playoff time. It does make things a lot easier, especially since we have three best of fives in one week here for the playoffs starting next Sunday. Not to be excited about, but this game, I don't like this Monte Cristo. It makes me worry about when Maokai is invariably nerfed any further, and it's just, where does the primary engage come from? Because it feels like none of those champions are really viable at the moment. Some teams still play a bit of the Hecarim. We actually saw Sejuani in recent days, but people have really moved away from any semblance of primary engage. Uh, what? Annie, uh, Annie and Alistair? still exist, Papa Smitty. I'm still thinking about the top lane most. You're right, the engaged supports are there, but top lane is Shen versus Fizz. Kragas is still there. There are some good choices out of the jungle too, but uh, I think Maokai is still in a perfectly fine place. Exactly. There's, there's no reason not to pick him up, especially with, we've seen a lot of Maokai bans, interestingly, but very few Maokai picks. Very, very strange. And what that means for this particular game is Frozen and Coco go for the love taps in mid. 
it's just going to be one of those scenarios where when you get control over Dragon, the team that gets the wards and the team that gets in the front is going to be able to set up perfectly, have their hyper carry in the back line, super, super safe, just because no team is really picked for a catch-up mechanic. And again, the team that gets the first Dragon is going to be so far in the ascendancy to pile on the second, the third, every advantage from there, and only a misplay or a significant outplay will really loom as an option for the enemy team to get back in the game. Yeah, as soon as you get that one and start dominating the Dragon area, it does become that much harder for uh, teams without engage to get in there. And interestingly, Roar and Ignar are opting into a 2v2 with the Vayne Janna lane. Vayne Janna has a very, very high win rate percentage in the LPL. We haven't seen a lot of it in Champions. It's very, very popular there, of course. Early laning can be very difficult. Level 2 is pretty strong, but Braun Cogmore, enough said. This is a super powerful 2v2 lane for CJ Enters. Yeah, it won't, uh, they get a couple levels here, and Braum and Cog are able to nullify a lot of that damage. It's uh, some Korean casters right there. Very, very dapper. There was a Tarek there, that's always good. Gems. I don't know if they're as outrageous as Tarek is. It's unfortunate. We all strive for that, Monte Cristo. <laughs> the dream. The dream. <laughs> to be as outrageous as Tarek. Well, he now I know what your new cosplay is going to be. Look, he, rocks, he rocks pink in a very impressive way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, first gank of the game going to be coming through from Ambition. This should be pretty obvious. Of course, gank expression has been the method of shutting down from IM for many teams. Ambition thinks better of it, starts to pop into the enemy jungle, going for that gank around by the tri brush instead. We mentioned this stat during the pregame, but 5-1 in his last six on Rek'Sai, taking up this very important meta jungler in Rek'Sai and just turning around what was a very lopsided negative win rate early in the season, so it's good to see Ambition roll with the meta, and we might actually see some heads-up jungle play between Tus and Ambition. Okay, Ambition already low, has to get out of there with the E, and there's the follow-up on the Q immediately into an unburrow, oh. and Shen is not really there to respond. Ambition trying to get a nice oh. flash taunt, and that's going to be first blood. Not done yet. For Expression, Shy now trying to hop out. Remember, he doesn't have flash, just that ignite. And are they going to go for it? Looks like the dive is coming through. Oh. Q finish from Tucson. And I don't know why Ambition would walk into that river brush instead of out towards the tri brush to get him away from the taunt flash over the wall. Nice skirmishing from Expression and Tucson, but pretty awful skirmishing there from CJ Antis. Well, Ambition went for a walk in the enemy jungle. He used his trinket very early just to get vision of whether the Gromp had been cleared, went to clear it himself, and just had no idea that Lee Sin was going to come up. And Lee Sin's got the damage. He's got the three levels, and it's so easy to win a skirmish that despite the fact that Shy was the first person to respond, CJ find themselves in a hole surprisingly early in this game. Yeah. Well, I mean, he started the skirmish at 50% health, True. and I, this is what we're talking about with Ambition. Why? Why go for that grub? It doesn't get you anything at all. You got the information you needed, which was, hello, Lee Sin's not here on my extended top laner, so I can sit here, put a ward down, and then leave. So that Shy will know what's going on. But And then the misplay after that, too, just getting too close to the brush. I don't even know where he was going right there. Usin is going on. A merry way, just going around the lanes, has the sidestone as the first straight up item after picking up the kill contribution, finds Ambition again. Ambition not going to make the same mistake twice, you know, you raise the question why. Why not Trick, I think needs to become a meme, a bit like why not Zoidberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some trading here, Roar actually has to pop back with the, oh, nice kill from Madly. Space low, Space going to use that summoner hill, can they turn on to Ignar? No. They think better of it. Big mistake from Raw, though. He hit the three concussive bow stacks, didn't use heal, didn't use flash, and just died straight up to the level two Winter's Bite. That's just poor damage calculation by a seasoned AD carry player like Raw. Yeah, quite confusing indeed, especially after the exhaust went down on him. You'd think he'd take that a little bit more seriously, but no, Mad Life. Oh, baby. Going to secure that one. Tucson is here. Space is low. And there's the tornado. Can he get down onto him? Space trying to kite this out. Zephyr on him. There we go. Mad Life jumps in, but Unbreakable is now down. Has to flash out. Tucson has a Shen ult. He will get stunned up. And there comes Expression into the bottom side for a kill onto Mad Life. And CJ just overstaying. 
repeatedly here. They had no idea where Tucson was. All too easy for him to pick up that kill. So I am concerned about CJ in this particular game. Now, to be fair, many CJ games start like this and then end with them team fighting their way out of a bad situation. But a large gold lead appearing early. Well, let's make one point, Monte Cristo. Remember who gave the first blood for CJ? It was Ambition. From memory, that was always a good sign. <laughs> Well, in the mid lane and on Blaze, yes. <laughs> That's true. It was, uh... Look, sometimes when you're 3-1 behind to LCIM, you have to look for the bright side of things once, Krista. Well, the crazy thing about this is Coco has to run backwards. And we see Mad Life and Ambition not able to clear out a pink board. In fact, we'll just lose one of their own immediately. Is that if I am win this, CJ is all of a sudden in a position where uh, actually, Najin can surpass them in the rankings. Now, that likely would include a win over SK Telecom, which probably not likely for Najin to do, but still, you don't want to give up any opportunity, especially against a team that you are an overwhelming favorite against. All right, call it right here. Eight minutes into game one of the night. Is Najin going to Worlds, Monte Cristo? I have no idea. Come on, you know they are. No, I don't need to, you know I need to see are. more of their games, Papa. Uh, this, this Color commentator excuses. Need more tape. I do need more tape because they only got good, and since that point, they haven't been playing against some of the high-quality teams. I think we'll learn a lot from Najin versus SKT. That's the big exciting game. It's next Wednesday, I believe. It's uh, one of the last three matches of the season, um, Wednesday and Thursday. This game, I am. They're playing logical League of Legends. They got that advantage up top. Expression ping six first. So, of course, went for the gank down bottom. Did Tucson. Had the backup from Shen. It's shy up on top lane Fizz. He had no counter wave puts. This is AD Fizz, not maxing the playful trickster. If he didn't actually lose anything, his uh -oh. ambition. Void rushes right into Tucson, who just stole his red buff. Tucson invading since he has the pressure in the top lane, and he knows that he is more potent than ambition in the jungle right now. Building into that warrior enchantment well ahead of Ambition. It's really nice to stone. see. It's really nice to see from Tucson. This is a player who hasn't been in the lineup recently. He's come back. The ball's on this man quite large. Yeah, I'm really enjoying watching Tucson play, uh, especially when we talk about facing off against Score, who's been on a bit of a tear recently and performing quite well. Mm against KT Rolster, not just folding under the jungle pressure that KT likes to put down. Instead, playing aggressive champions and making the plays on that Nidalee. So, I am have so much lane control in multiple lanes. You know, Orianna, only a passive farmer. Shh. Already see Fizz behind. Tucson's gonna keep skirmishing. So much damage already. Draws out the flash. Suddenly, the gank pressure from Ambition is none. And he doesn't have any control of his jungler either. Yeah, are they going to die? Victor is coming up right now through the enemy jungle. And there we go. Fish is gonna miss. Expression and Tucson uh -oh. picking up that first kill. He's trying to, oh, there's the ignite. And the Shen ult has to be used. But guess what, Frozen's here. Goodbye, Death Ray will zap the Fizz. Mad Life in space trying to get something out of this situation. They do force him on soon, but that's it. Not even a summoner used on the bottom side. Tucson just going berserk this game. 2-0 and 3 at 10 minutes on this Lee Sin. 100% kill participation. Has the Warrior Sightstone already at 10 minutes, and even though it was a very sloppy dive, when you're playing around lanes that are ahead, you can take those extra turret shots and credit to the turret tanking. It was actually very smart. Shen ult was drawn out, but all in all, the lead increases for I am. Yeah, they didn't want to wait for the Victor right there. That would have been the safe thing. Victor was 100% coming to that. They were worried perhaps Coco would get there too, but they did actually have a window where sh that Fizz would have been all by his lonesome 1v3. Still took it. Still use the Shen ult in an intelligent way to save Tucson through the Ignite and Shy the second death of the game. Expression and Tucson just doing great work this game already. You see the opportunity cost of picking a champion like Fizz over Maokai. Of course, he missed his fish. Of course, missed his only real CC, his only real a deterrent to the turret dive, and that wouldn't have been the case with the Twisted Advance. So we just come back to why the Fizz. Well, and Tucson, now that he has this fast Sightstone and Warrior enchantment, just goes for a solo dragon right now. They have pink wards on both sides of that dragon pit, so very safe for them to go ahead and execute this. 
And all he gets is a shield, but that's enough. And look at CJ's red side jungle. They have a ward on multiple buffs, so they knew exactly where Ambition was. There was no worries about any sort of a contest or a steal. Ignar going for a walk. Very comfortable. Yeah, things in general going swimmingly for I am, and yeah. we mentioned it before. This is the this is a snowball game. This is two teams with the same identity with very low backline threat. This dragon control continues. This game keeps playing out the same way. Hard to see how CJ will get back into this game barring a massive mistake from I am. Yeah, I am. Um, they they really do sort of have to throw the game at this point. Two thousand gold in the lead before fifteen minutes. And they have that first dragon. They are dictating the tempo of this game. Tucson is an absolute monster. And Ignar has been very good when it comes to warding and playing the map for this IM team. Coco getting bursted. Not going to make it out with a kill. So Tucson can't quite land the Q after Coco uses his flash and his summoner heal to escape that and dodge the skill shot. Aren't games very different when Coco is not on a champion who can make plays or when he really relies you know, the gank's energy to come through from Ambition. When Coco can go selfish, Zazia, he gets solo kills on that champion. Arunglaive Ezreal doesn't look for lane pressure just because he wants to passively farm out. Those are two champions that can really carry in the late game. And Orianna, she certainly does her share of things, specifically the utility, but also decent burst. It's just not the identity of champion that's been core to Coco and CJ's rise in recent weeks. Yeah, and as you, we see Shy struggling in that top lane, he does have to toss out the fish just to stop Tucson from getting on top of him one more time. The only thing that's going well right now for CJ is this bottom lane to a degree. They have a slight CS advantage, but they should probably have a much bigger one considering the Cog Braum versus Vayne Janna. That is incredibly tilted in favor of CJ, and they don't have that much turret damage to show for it thanks to IM's presence with Shen and Lee Sin in the bottom lane. And while this is a very good 2v2 lane, it doesn't have that much kill pressure, Montague. So that's the problem. Is that okay? You get the lucky concussive blow stun. Maybe you can get a kill, but in a long laning phase, there's so much disengage from Janna, especially post six. The Vayne Janna, you know, traditionally a very weak lane, not really seen as competitively viable. Like back in season three, when say Tristana Janna was of the same kind of uh, just unviability in terms of just 2v2 laning. Bot lane's gotten so defensive, gotten so passive, that you get away with champions who have so much inherent synergy in the late game. The tumble, the ability to dodge skill shots on Vayne, and then the queen of disengage in Janna will rule late game team fights. Well, it's also the way they played around it, though. If CJ had their druthers, they would have just pushed up and taken out the turret, right? And they got a kill in the 2v2 in that lane, so <laughs> hey, the pressure has been there. They made it work onto the vein, but it's just been the Shen and the Fed Lee Sin down there that have made them quite afraid to push forward and take advantage of their situation. When they lose lane control like they have just now, you'll see just effective zoning going to come through. Vayne and Janna can't overextend whenever the freeze is started by space. So either need to go back, pick up the Krugs, and then come back into lane when things have reset a little bit. As Tucson's just hitting every skill shot today. Yeah. Definitely on fire. Interesting that this guy, we hadn't seen him in a while, mm. taken out for Spooky, but he's always been one of the top players uh, on the solo queue ladder, even after his change over to the jungle position. He's maintained top 20, top 30, and now we're seeing that come out. His mechanics have definitely been on point. His ability to hit those skill shots and follow up four kills in the last couple of best of threes. And he's a player that still played jungle when he was top 20 as a support in terms of the professional. But he was playing jungle and solo queue as Coco with the hula hoop. Hopefully that is just a one-off because that will become such an important skill shot maybe 10, 15 minutes further into this game. Yeah, not even getting a summoner with that mm. either. Just... It's hard no to kill pressure Victor. anymore, just none. It's hard to kill Victor when you're Ariana. He gets that periodic, what, every four second, a huge burst of speed from the Q Augment. You're not going to hit that skill shot. There's just not solo kill pressure. And I think that's what Coco needs to make CJ Antis function as a laning unit, because their laning phase is certainly not their claim to fame at the best of times. Yeah, or just uh, having something that he can hard carry on like Runeblade as in the late game like we were talking about earlier. He's gonna have he, to can, he can lose lane as long as he can carry late. So what can we really say for certain about a CJ Entis lineup that doesn't have the best jungle synergy with the lanes and requires carry from the mid lane when, of course, the carry pool has been shredded a little bit on patch 514 and moving into the future? 
I have to say, you know, it feels like as these patches change, specifically second through fifth can shift so much with just minute changes in the meta and personnel. Yeah, I think Jin Air definitely a victim mm. of meta shifts. Ku Tigers could be considered the same way. I still think there is a lot of carry potential out of the mid lane. Not on Ariana. Uh, well, don't play Oriana. Plenty of other available options. Remember, CJ were, was the one who banned TF this game. It's true. I wondered where they would go with Victor, uh, Victor, Azia banned, and of course, AP Ezreal no longer consideration, and surprised by the passivity they chose of the Oriana pick. Well, they didn't use the counter pick either. Nope. They got the Oriana in that second round of the draft, and they saved that last pick for a Kog'Maw, uh, which is honestly a pick that we would have expected them to take anyway. If Cobb was a champion, they could blind pick first pick on the blue side. It's the sort of champion that's powerful, that doesn't really have any tricky laning situations. They're 6-0 on. They've already shown plenty of Cogmore. And they picked it with, you know, a very strong laning champion in Braum. So, I don't know why they chose not to really hide anything in this top lane matchup. It's going from better to better for Expression, who's managed to build for lane and also diversified his tank portfolio. I've been thinking a lot about the Shen pick, because, of course, when we first saw Shen from Shy earlier this season, was building the Trinity Force, was building more into the damage. You look at his numbers, specifically the change around his passive, he has his passive up about 20% more of the time, and his passive is effectively Sheen, because of course it procs onto turrets. His split pushing is still pretty damn good, and you don't even have to build the damage to kind of set his build behind. Yeah, and when we look at his build this game, and we talk about the top lane Fizz, you need both armor and magic resist to really be an effective force against him, but he's gotten so fed that he already has a cow, already has that Sunfire cape, so Shy really can't do anything to kill him right now. And the constant, unrelenting pressure onto the tier two just keeps on moving forward. They have to make a play around this Shen at some point or else they're just going to keep losing out on these dragons. Gold lead's grown as well. It's about 3,200 gold. It's only getting bigger. It's only eking forward because they don't have massive advantages. But look, they're going to start to contest buffs. This is what you should do when you're ahead. But remember, they don't have that much lane pressure in bottom, so it's still a risk. And here comes Ignar to sit there. He's going to kick Coco out. There's the Chaos Storm. Coco will escape with his life, but Ambition all the way boxed in right there. Especially comes down with that ultimate, and they are going to get the blue buff. Oh, who got it, actually? Oh, yes, it was Frozen, looks like, who picked it up in the end. Shy doesn't even bother teleport. He knew he couldn't impact the fight. They have to give up this dragon as well. We keep coming back to the fact that Fizz excluded. There's no real sort of primary engage, and even if you include Fizz, certainly not reliable primary engage, as we saw in the turret dive, where Shy didn't even have the Fizz mechanics to hit someone on a 1v2 turret dive. Well, you start coming in with a primary engage Fizz, mm. playful trick string with an Oriana ball, and you are just asking for trouble there. Shy not anywhere near tanky enough to survive a round of burst from IM. He will just die to Victor right now, no problem. I forget whether going into playful tricks to actually drops the shield as well, because you have to think being untargetable might actually release the Oriana ball. I'll watch for that interaction in the first fight, it just eludes me, but it's certainly not reliable in terms of primary engage. And the Maokai was on the table, that's the crazy thing, is it was sitting there, everyone plays it, but not chosen. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. We, we just haven't seen Fizz picked into this Shen matchup. What is there to like about the Fizz into the Shen? And Space now getting dove. TP has to come in, but they get a ton of damage down onto Space. They have a Ring of Wards, no chance. And now the TP canceled by Shy. Well, there's one less tool for CJ to use, and they could be dove just once again right here, simply from Expression TP. Expression has teleports about 30 seconds away from his ultimate, so the global pressure is going to be very, very crazy very, very soon. And lane control and bots the scary thing because it was every other lane they were winning. It was only bot lane where Space was really putting up a brave face. Now it's probably going to start to lose any sort of turret pressure. And I am. They basically run this whole map. Yes, they do. Here's that TP. Expression already in the back line. Space low hits up by a tornado, and he is surely dead at some point. Got to get the summoner heal. Roar picks up the kill onto Space as the Monsoon knocks everyone else out. They tried really hard to give Space that kill. Frozen on the back side of the turret. Shy trying to do work on the top side with his Trinity Force now complete. 
Uh, they, at best, are going to trade one for one when it comes to towers, but the kill on space putting an incredible miracle even further into the lead. Yeah, it's a massive lead. Doesn't really feel in the goalie, but 4,000 this early, but the two dragons especially, it's a big thing for LZIM. They're really stacking advantages, and we just didn't see this coming into the matchup. We didn't see it in picks and bans, but we knew someone was going to get ahead, but surprise, surprise, it's specifically Tucson, and thus I am. Yeah, and it all, this is, we, we talked about the similarity between these two compositions, Papa Smithy, and the fact that when you don't have, when you have two comps that aren't running primary engage, that have these scaling hyper carries that no one can get onto, if one of team starts to get ahead, and you can get priority on the Dragon, it, it's so hard to break that. And this is a snowball that has resulted from Ambition's first giving up first blood and Shy's early death too. That has changed this game, and IM, to their credit, has done a beautiful job of playing out those win conditions. But realistically, when you see two teams that are so similar in strength and so similar in strategy, once one team starts to get going, there's almost no way for the other team to come back if it's played properly. Let's try and be a one-eyed CJ fan and work out what they do have. As you mentioned, the comps are very similar. You could say the main difference is that Shy is building for damage from the top lane. So you might think, okay, if I am ever start to lose vision control, maybe Fizz will get that big pick with the Trinity Force, kill the Vayne in a rotation. But you look at the minimap, certainly not what's happening. The warding, four, two warding totems, two sight stones. Vision's been excellent for I am, so... Look, barring a big misposition with all the extra information that these green wards are providing, I am should have this. Yeah, absolutely. They, they have the victor too, which is so strong when it comes to pushing towers. Very, very safe. Tucson now coming around. He's going to queue over. Kick space straight into the wall. Ignar's there. Has the monsoon out because they can't afford to lose people right there. And CJ was on a big rotation into the bottom side. Expression. Also present, but just not enough damage to finish off that kill. Frozen standing in a ward, getting pressure around the dragon. One and a half minutes to the all-important third dragon. Makes those picks that much more reliable for IM. Makes them even better at sidestepping the fish that's been regularly missing from Shy. Yeah, it's hard to say just how much control IM have on this game. And still Coco, you know, the big carry for this team has provided precisely nothing for CJ. 25 minutes in, it's no surprise he hasn't picked for it, but why the Oriana still looms is a big question. Well, I think the Ori's fine if you have some, some form of top laner or jungler to use it with, mm. but this, this Oriana doesn't have very many tools. It's basically Coco cannot get the ball into the enemy team. So he's overly reliant on the enemy team coming to him to be able to make any kind of play. And that's not what you want to put Coco on when he is such a great playmaker for this CJ and his team. Looking at the goal differences, about 1,300 in the mid lane. Actually, Mira leads in most of the top side of the map. Interesting to see Frozen, like a lot of recent Victor players, have been rushing that perfect hex hook, getting him much earlier. We talk about the lack of pick power in fights. I mean, you throw down the uh, Victor W, suddenly now, it's something you have to priority flash away or sidestep. So just another thing for CJ to consider in a team fight, specifically anyone trying to dive the vein, is going to have a hard time dealing with the perfect hex score upgrade of Victor W. I don't think he can dive the vein anymore. I think Roar is perfectly safe. And even if he wasn't, Roar is now getting a QSS as his third item because there's simply no da there's no armor here. Shy is only now starting to build up that Frozen Art after falling behind. And then here purchasing the very expensive Trinity Force. Freest of all dragons comes through to IM. No contest from CJ Antis. <laughs> this is what happens. We saw the exact thing, same thing between Jin Air and the Ku Tigers in game three. If two comps do basically the same thing, one of them gets a lead and it just keeps rolling. It does, it does. Uh, CJ is, to their credit, doing a decent job of denying deep boards in their own jungle. That's about one of the only things they have going for them right now. IM's ward line, especially in the bottom side, hasn't advanced very far, but... It's, uh... So you were a pro coach, Monte Cristo. You know, you dealt with your fair share of picks and bans, whether it was in scrims or the live environment. How did drafts go so poorly so late in the draft? Because they would have had an idea, they would have had considerations, but how did CJ Entis get there, do you think? Like specifically the last two rounds of the draft seems to have really 
been counterproductive I don't, I don't in, understand in, the fizz in creating any sort of an identity. But even, look, accepting the fizz, it could have been a fizz last week. It didn't have to be this duo lane picking your threats, leaving your AD carry to the last pick. Just doesn't seem to flow. Yeah, I agree. Uh, to be fair, when I was coaching, I was it was before coaches were allowed in the booth. Sure. So you would have to rely on the players to do that, which is obviously significantly sketchier. So I don't really have any experience in this regard. But I uh, I agree with you. I think that the Kogma was a safe pick here earlier on. Um, I wouldn't have been too worried. I, I also I think Tucson's played the the Lee Sin well, but I still think Gragas is a better pick for Incredible Miracle mm -hmm. overall. And we know Tucson is a good Gragas player, so that surprises me a little bit. I mean, both Tucson and Ambition, good warrior Lee Sin players. Ambition's really moved away from it, but a lot more of the Rek'Sai. Now you see the downside of the Rek'Sai, where if you just lose those first couple of skirmishes, your confidence is down, but just your ability to impact the map, you're kind of a non-factor, because you're using your flash defensively to not die, and you don't even have it for the flash unborrow. The only true initiation and skirmishing potential Rek'Sai has is kind of gated by that flash cooldown. Yeah, Ambition just trying to fight for vision here. That's about all he can do. He's had to spend so much of this game just getting pushed around by Tucson, who has opted for a locket after his warrior enchant, now just starting to build tank here. He's not going to go full Lyra and get a Hex Drinker afterwards. He does have some shame, I suppose. No shame in the Hex Drinker. Come on, Monty Krista. I think they have enough damage. It's better for him to be a tank right now and live when they have Victor and Vayne. They do not need a high damage jungler here. They've got the damage already. Disappoint me, the last game we what we cast had a very overly fair Yasuo and a lot of fun hijinks. So back to the sensible world of Korean League of Legends, sadly. But... Uh, CJ, they need to make something happen. They don't have any tools to do so. They don't have any map control. Feels like we should just talk about something else, because this game, I just don't see how CJ are going to get back into it. It's It's been one of those games. We think about CJ's draft sometimes, and CJ has just randomly lost games like this previously. They've played Vayne, Fizz, Cassidy, and, Cassidin and had no wave clear and gotten absolutely That was smashed. a real banger of a team combat that was. One. Horrendous. Absolutely horrible. This one isn't quite that bad, but it's pretty bad. It's pretty damn bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> so, I, I don't really know. It's just, I think that team compositions are better when you actually have some sort of contingency plan besides we will crush this Shen with this Fizz in the laning phase. But it's not... The thing I'm going to tell you, Monchquista, you can crush a Maokai with Fizz, not 100% of the time, but fairly regularly. Shen's a whole different beast. Yeah. It's much harder to do. He's so much more slippery because he doesn't have to have a targeted escape pod. He can easily Shadow Dash away from the fish. He can easily make different decisions because you max taunt second anyway, so it's on a fairly short cooldown as the laning phase goes on. Tucson's brawling with ambition. Space is for their first and Vayne's in base, so maybe time to get out if you're I am. Yeah. Although ambition actually... The one on the retreat right there, actually taking a fair amount of damage from the Baron. Ale seems to be in action between Shy and Expression, although they're toss tussling a bit now. No damage from Expression though, so can't really make much happen. I don't know, he managed to hit Shy for 50% of his HP in that little exchange, so he's got enough going for him, and there's a ward in that brush. He's just delaying him, being as annoying as he possibly can before going to keep on clearing out this wave, and that is a Phage onto this vein. Oh, so it looks baby. like an early Trinity Force. You thought he was slippery before. Add in the Rage passive and the, the semblance of burst damage that you're going to get from the Trinity Force. And man, it's going to be very hard for anyone to get anywhere near Raw. <laughs> Ambition almost has that Randuin's Omen. And Shy oh. working feverishly towards a frozen heart, but there's not really anyone to stop. The vein damage. This is your 2013 OGN dream match. As we're watching <laughs> Shy, and Shy versus Expression. Frost versus Najin Sword. <laughs> oh, yeah. What could have been? I steal there from Tucson. It's the Wolf Spirit over. But That'll help out Expression pretty substantially in his split pushing. This is what the OGN Legion want to see. Now the Mist Taunt comes through from Expression. Do you think they wanted to see the, the Mist Taunt? Yeah, they did. Nailed the Miss Torn. But keep pushing forwards. Nothing Shy can do because he's Fizz. Yep. And there you go. He's going to tank out this turret. War gets there and finishes it off. So 
A tier two, first one of the game, now down. 15 seconds up until that dragon. Couldn't have happened at a better time for LZIM. Roar, maybe you don't want to walk there, buddy. He doesn't seem to have many cares in the world, Monte Cristo. They pushed Pink Wards up absurdly far into the blue side jungle of CJ. They will explode the dragon and uh, yeah, go from there. One dragon explosion coming right up. With a side of double kill, perhaps? The side of double kill. Well, we'll see. They get the dragon. Shen is already here. So no need to come in with that ultimate. And CJ decides maybe we shouldn't fight this. That's a good idea. And Coco forces the flash. Chusa oh. goes forward. He actually dies right there. Goes too far in advance. Now they're going to have to kite this one out. There is an Oriana Ball onto the Bane. How did they get it there? Now Roar has the Shen ult onto him, but there's the Chaos Storm. They get a trade out of that, and they're trying to pursue some of these running members from CJ. Ends up being a 1 for 2. That actually went better for IM than I thought it would, given Tucson's very early demise. Frozen and Roar doing so much damage when they finally focused on the same target with is down. They actually potentially could have gone back into that fight, but everyone had kited away. First instinct with two members down, of course, not to force any sort of 3v4, 3v5 engage, but scary for Ian. They're still somewhat competitive after effectively Tucson just going crazy. Yeah, all right, let's check this out. Well, Tucson just ex extended this vastly too far. He actually followed Coco's flash uh, with his Q. Didn't mean to do that. And so gets too far in advance of his other team. Ambition comes in. Doesn't even have to flash for that engage, too. So a bit of sloppy kiting there from IM. They should not have been hit by a Rek'Sai on Burrow if Ambition's not using a summoner. So, in importantly, flash is used by IM only Jana and Shen. So all the carries, I'm going to group Tucson in there, just given how strong he is right now. Have flash available, teleport's being drawn out. And Coco going to get caught right here. Kick back. Expression comes in with a late teleport, but he is there before Kog'Maw and Shy can be, so it doesn't really matter. Focus down, destroyed, and there will be a Baron for sure from LZIM. There's no smite up on the CJ side, and all they have are two very squishy carries. Expression can just sit here in front of that turret. He still has Stan United if anything goes crazy, so it's going to be the free Baron to join the four free dragons. And another free dragon will arrive in uh, about three minutes from now. Mm -hmm. So Baron, dragon number five, very real possibilities for IM as they are just crushing CJ Entis in this game. Frozen's got the sheen. He wants to have that turret damage. Speaking of turret, it's going to explode the inner turret in the mid lane with Lich Bane, even though it's only Bane for Siege. Going to be very, very safe with the disengage and shielding from the likes of Lee Sin and Shen. So things go from bad for worse, from bad to worse for CJ Antis. Yes, they do. Trinity Force now finished onto Vayne. Lich Bane done onto Victor, so goodbye, Towers. Double Sheen, feels pretty good. Two big Sheen items complete. Not to have much hype about this one because, yeah, it's been decided from that first Dragon. Yeah, especially now Ignar Crucible has been acquired. He will be able to get Roar out of any further situations. When he's near Janna, 487 move speed, 464 base. So quick is this Vayne. Just gliding around team fights. Shy wasn't getting into the back line before. Nothing's going to change. All right. Expression has the phage. All right. Is he going for the Trinity Force or... He's probably going for the Trinity Force. Triple Sheen should be the name of the game here. And that just will allow him now. You do see the big damage coming out of Coco. The addition of that Void Staff. Ignar. Trying to ward there and gets caught out by a QW combination. So much flat movement speed by the three, by the two phages that have been completed in general, just across the board. The item pickups make IM slippery. I really do like the phage proc on the she on Shen. Of course, 20 movement speed every time he just auto attacks a minion just makes him that much more reliable and hitting a taunt specifically when Flash is down. Well, Shen may be going for the one three one. Uh, Roar was waiting for that wave in the brush, and this is a fantastic 1-3-1 one, one for IM. Great calls on the lane. Really difficult to keep this base intact right now. Ambition and space both on the top side. Roar getting some free autos there. He can't have that happening with a Sheen and a Baron up minion wave. Meanwhile, it's like Ambition, Expression just coming into oh. the mid lane right now and popping the Talisman to get out, but that tower's super low, and it's just going to get 
melted by the Lich Bane. The Lich Bane doing so much work. They're just spit pushing threats across the map. Like you said, here's the engage. Oh, they caught space, instantly dead. That Kog'Maw, the Lee Sin Kick doing its job. Double kill for Frozen's Victor. And Ambition will be condemned out of the battle. That will be an uncontested inhibitor. No one there to stop it from going down. They transition immediately into the Nexus stores. Looks like they just want to end this game right here, right now, and they should be able to do it. They just need to navigate the Orianna ultimate. Still got a lot of ability power. See the engage, though. Shy gets targeted. Not going to die. I am. Don't be too silly. Yeah, frozen. That doesn't really take any damage. Thanks to the stand united onto him. He's dueling Coco. Uh, with that Death Ray and Tucson, and now they're just going to push down this Nexus. A win in game one for Long Zhu IM, and a dominant one at that. And all the OGN Legion should go back and just count how many times we had to use the word uncontested this game. Uncontested dragons after the first one, uncontested inhibitors, and what effectively felt like an uncontested game for IM, and the reality of the pit comp versus the pit comp. Get that lead specifically through Tucson and win the game. Absolutely. Really difficult once you fall behind. I question CJ's use of this Fizz. It hasn't been a good pick for them in the past. It doesn't look like a good pick for them now. But when you have two team compositions that are so similar in nature, the smallest thing can start tilt the end of the season, shockingly. And surprisingly, maybe they've actually finalized a settled roster. It's only been Frozen and Ignar that have been ever present. They've played around with the likes of Lilac, Expression, Spooky, Tucson, Raw, and just a whole load of different players. Sonstar as well in the AD carry role. This particular lineup looking strong. Yes, yes they are. So Twisted Fate again banned by CJ Emtis, in spite of the fact that it that's one of Coco's better champions. So. Not too surprising on the blue side, but it was, I think, quite surprising on the red side last game. They're probably just going to try and first pick Victor, though, if I had to guess. Yeah, they're definitely going to go for a mid lane pickup. Not like there was anything st uh, strictly wrong with Coco's Orianna, but just didn't fit. It just wasn't the pick that CJ needs to succeed. They need Coco on a champion that can make things himself, that can both win lane and roam from mid lane, as Annie is banned. Primary engage. Maybe another game to add to the pile of just no primary engage anywhere to be found. Quite possibly. Uh, CJ likes to first pick that Braum, but they probably will first pick Braum if both Azir and the Victor are up. But with Azir banned, you have to believe that it will be a first pick Victor unless IM does something nutty like leave the Rise up mm. and try and trade that. Well, certainly that has been growing more and more as a possibility. We've seen Rise mid, we've seen Rise top. It feels like the timers have been set even later. It feels like maybe the trade-up's not quite as severe, but just watching Ryze yesterday, Ryze can still do impressive damage in the late game and giving Shy a champion that he's been known for, a champion that does bring carry threat from the top. He really reached for the fears and it didn't work. But I am, they do ban out the Ryze with last pick and Victor first pick does seem to be very popular from CJ Anders. I don't see why you wouldn't take Victor first here. You still have plenty of supports for Mad Life to play with the Rise ban coming through. There's not an obvious power pick to go for right here. And just take it. Take it away from Frozen. Put him on something less comfortable. Like Echo. Like Echo. That's He's probably going to go for the Echo. You should know that after the last series. Two times in a row picking up the Echo, forcing Katie Rolster to ban Echo. So, yeah, they also beat it. They were one and one against that TP Echo, so it's not an unstoppable force by any means, but they're thinking long and hard about this. Surprisingly so, given the fact that Coco an excellent Victor player. Victor, if he gets ahead in lane, even against, especially against a melee champion, like the Echo, can just roam, but we didn't consider that Elise is also available. This would be Ambition's first professional game on Elise. It was banned on the blue side by IM, but Ambition has a bit of a mare in the jungle. Suddenly they're giving him all the tools to succeed. And has that ever been a winning strategy for CJ Enters? I really don't think you prioritize the Elise here. Ambition has to have a big game because giving up the victor is so huge. And CJ said, this is our answer to the victor, showed that Oriana, and now what do you say? This is questionable unless they have another counter pick. 
if if Echo is indeed seen as a counterpick to this mid lane Victor, we know Coco can play it. Coco actually one of the first players to adopt a mid lane Echo here before all those mid lane nerfs came through. Worth knowing that it was wholly unsuccessful in the, the first time that we. That saw was him not his it. fault. That was That's he actually true. played well. That is that is a okay. misrepresentation. Okay, I'm being a bit results orientated. Just didn't feel like he had any big outplays in the mid lane, but that's a lot to be taken from a one game sample size. So, look, Coco needs a carry champ. If we see another Orianna pick, putting all the eggs in the ambition basket, a player who struggled, a player who arguably we think that Trick might fit this roster better. I don't even know what to say. You have to say that Orianna and Elise, it's a good ball carrier, but still, I don't want to see it. To be fair, we don't have enough information about Trick. We do know that Trick beat SK Telecom, mm -hmm. and he did look more solid. But the caveat is not a huge sample size to go off of. I think the biggest thing is we know Ambition is probably not the jungler for this roster, and some change may be needed. And they have a guy who's sitting there who might well be. Yeah, you have to think that trying things. Look, CJ, Ambition is synonymous with the CJ organization. Been there so long. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but for now, they're really prioritizing his experience. And look, at least he's going to have a good ball carrier in the Elise if they do go for Orianna. But no, the very last second change to Vayne Thresh. Remember, Braum was available, but they're choosing for the Vayne Thresh lane. A mad life, 8-2, a wonderful Thresh player, but it's a lot to reach for, I think, in the second round of picks. Actually giving up the Braum that they prized so highly in the last draft, taking it in their first round on the red side. Uh, they get the Elise, I would assume I am. If they want to take Victor, they want to take Lucian, you might as well just go for that lease in again. Just play for the early game and try and snowball in a similar fashion. Why the hell not? Are you tempted to take the Braum away? Will they settle on the Janna or take away the Braum? As you mentioned, Tucson just won an MVP, was excellent with the Lee Sin. Two very high skirmish junglers. We could definitely see another play reminiscent of what basically won I Am The Game five minutes into it in the battle between Rek'Sai and Lee Sin. Elise, she's super powerful on this patch, but still, low base stats. If Lee Sin gets his uh, skills in order, could still win a trade in the skirmish up top. Okay, well, Janna is the lock. Hmm? I'm a bit surprised by that. The Braum still open, of course. We'll see uh, what exactly they want here out of the top lane that could justify this amount of disengage coming from them. Of course, uh, Janna Lucian, a very strong lane too. Big bully lane, you can get a lot of very effective trade damage with the Eye of the Storm on you as a Lucian, but less kill pressure for the Lee Sin. So Oriana Maokai seems like the play. Seems like the comp they should have picked last time out. Seems like we have very reliable ball carriers in both Elise, Maokai, and even situationally the Thresh. That's what we're expecting. He flashed the Jace as well. It's a possibility, but this comp kind of plays for itself. Yep, this is a much more logical composition. This is the composition they could have had, as you were saying, in game one of this series. I think, I think the Fizz is in the rack. The Cinder Hulk Fizz did not work. The no, non Cinder Hulk Fizz no, didn't work. Oh my no. goodness. Mmm. How are you feeling there, Monty? You're, you're actually looking down. You're not even looking at the screen anymore. I don't like low wave clears in both side lanes. Mm. It's been a problem. We saw KT falter against, or with this. They lost it. Remember. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't even understand. This is IM's last match against KT. What did KT do? They pick the Shen Vein combo with low wave clear, and they get their turrets plowed in, and they lose to Incredible Miracle. I would definitely not try this against Incredible Miracle because you know what can happen already. Now I am. They have their choice of top laners. They could just go for the Shen again, but it looks like they're considering now, something Shen is different. banned. No, sorry, Shen's banned. Yep. So I would go with Anar here. It's one of Expression's better champions. Has that range, so you're not going to be as vulnerable to the Viz. Seems like a reasonable champion to. Oh, okay. Baby. All right. I like it. I accept. So carry tops, huh? We got two of them. All righty. Well, that was a bit of a surprise pick. Now, it's worth noting that Expression does have a win on Jax this season. Expression he was one of the best Jax players a couple of years ago. This is the dream matchup. I don't know about the Fizz from Shy, but still, Expression on Jax. 
He makes us smile at this and think about the sort of things you can do in a 2v2 skirmish. There's four champions that have range gap clear. They've both got jumps to each other. The Fizz and the Elise are super slippery. If we do see the level three 2v2 up top, it's going to be fireworks. Yeah, it will be quite exciting to say the least. Expression can get going too. This Fizz is not going to be able to stop him whatsoever when it comes to that split push. Coco going on another high utility mid laner, putting a lot of faith in space, who's going to be in a losing matchup here to be able to carry this game if we get the standard lanes. I think CJ has to lane swap. I think CJ enters are just picking for hard mode, Monte Cristo. They're not going for the comps that really, they had them moused over and at the last second basically initiated a hard mode. Maybe they'll even flash in the base just to make it that much more difficult in this boot camp for finals. I mean, if they get these lanes rolling, they certainly can come to a crushing win, but it takes a big snowball. Let's see if CJ Antis can pull it out. Here we are, game two, Incredible Miracle up 1-0 over CJ Entis. I am not really fighting for anything here today. They are not a part of our playoffs, but CJ Entis, boy, would it be nice if they could win this and try and avoid some more best of fives in a possible playoff scenario. Some boisterous uh, cheers from the crowd, expression. No, something's up and backs away, so it's a five-man invade from CJ in the top side, so the vision wars are on. Maybe it's lane swap time. Yeah, I think you have to lane swap if you're CJ. If you're going to be relying on a situation where you have to use this vain lulu combination in late game team fights and vain lulu has been working in the past couple of sure. weeks here I, I don't have an issue with it but i would rather see some sort of tanky top laner just let the vein carry play the maokai who can be that big front line play the gnar oh baby and here we go spider check into the brush e first onto that police actually did manage to clear the wards that was nice focus fire from i am cj have to back away Lots of deep wards around, so we're expecting the lane swap. Might be cold. Have to wait and see. The big thing about the Maokai, and the big thing that, of course, Fizz doesn't provide, you've got Lulu with high mobility, good wave clear, but no semblance of wave clear anywhere else on the side of CJ Antis. Yes, and like I said, this is the problem. This is the problem that KT, KT had playing against me. <laughs> IM. This is what lost them that game, was the fact that IM took over the laning phase and acquired a massive gold lead. So he's pickabooing right now, trying to get that level one play. It is not going to work. Just has to settle with a sad little auto attack. And Ignar, a much less threatening Janna. He will be coming though for the tornado. Oh, oh boy. Let's see who won the HP trade. It was I am. Big advantage. No, it's, 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 it's 100 HP. It's not a big deal. Oh, but oh, this, on the other hand. Level 2. They got expression to level 2 already. So much jump, CC. Jump, leap strike, counter strike, counter strike, counter strike. Let's see. There's a flash. Tornado forces the flash from Coco. That's a great trade for Incredible Miracle. The level 2 ganking prowess is the reason why you sometimes do see the Jax jungle. You can do a lot of work at level 2. This is going to lead to a buff transfer, though, but uh, exciting times around the mid lane at two minutes. <laughs> Everybody wanted into that mid lane. Jana, not exactly the best support for that, but does uh, does force the flash with the flash tornado from Ignar. So we'll see how that translates. Uh, Expression will be TPing immediately into the top side with a wealth of potions to deal with Space's Bane. CJ getting the situation they want, though, as Ambition going to be taking some Krugs on the strong side jungle. Meanwhile, they are going to see Ignar with the Trinket Ward from Ambition. Oh, oh. oh hello. Oh, the saddest oh, gold. Bad Life is super low. What? Bad Life may just solo him right now. They're going to try and get the kill over, and that is a kill on the Urchin Strike for the Fizz. Bigger problems than that, Monster. So that's double buffs over to the Fizz. Oh, boy. That Tucson. Tucson giveth, Tucson taketh away. <laughs> What was what he doing there is the, is the big question. Vision draws out the exhaust. Expression falls very low. They could have got these lane assignments without the crazy play from Tucson. 
would have been a very big strategical advantage for IM, but suddenly, things looking really rough. Well, he was down there trying to counter jungle Krugs while on weak side. I guess the, the junglers in this matchup are both going to take high risk, extremely low reward plays to give away first bloods. Really weird series for that already. You mean sick outplays, not a big enough reward for you, Monte Cristo? Hey, hey, you're not in the LPL anymore. Calm down there. I forget sometimes. <laughs> I moused over to the LPL during the break and saw some things that... Uh, yeah, M3 uh, rocking the uh, the Pantheon Quinn duo lane and brand mid with Cassiopeia top. Standard comp, for and, sure. And of course, Dade, the 2014 player of the year, rocking the jungle, sorry, the mid lane brand. Just meta all over the place there. <laughs> okay, well... This is silly. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Ambition spent a whole lot of time in the top lane there, alongside space, but now the call has come through. We must kill the Coco, they say, even though we do not have Flash on our support. The Coco does not have Flash either. Can they sneak up on him? The Coco, oh, there's a tornado, but no. Can't get in, lay, in range of the Leap Strike. Counter-Strike goes off and doesn't affect much of anything. Roar gets out of that situation. Uh, Shy, um, those double buffs just doing a number onto the AD carry who has no pots and just that Doran's blade. And obviously the red buff is the annoyance factor, but the blue just means you can be so liberal with a high mana cost uh, level one cooldown like your E and go for those trades that much more often. Ambition is trying to parlay the lane advantage they have in bottom to invade the jungle and it's it's opposite day. It is opposite day. Well, all bets are off now. Okay. Oh, nope, Ambition got it. And there's the Chain CC as everybody coming through. Mad Life for MVP at oh. this game. Clutch Summoner Heal. Lucen, what you doing? Can they turn it around? Nice Lantern from Mad Life once again. And like we were saying at the start of this match, Ambition and Mad Life look the best together when Mad Life is on Thresh because he can save him with that Lantern. And it does help out with Ambition's tendency to aggressively attempt counter jungling. And of course, Thresh is so much more forgiving, like you mentioned, the range on that land and the acquisition range and just the cast range is massive. So you can, you know, maybe be a bit more judicious or a bit more off with your communication, still be able to help as Mad Life was able to do there. Frozen had to flash heal just to keep Tucson alive. I'm not even sure if that's worth it. Yeah, I don't, I really don't think it is actually. Uh, he wasn't going to lose very much right there by dying and Ambition already with the advantage in terms of the jungle. Well, here we go, Mad Life coming around. But they do see him through the Tri-Brush Ward, shy up an immense amount of farm, and having that first blood money, he is a very rich Fizz, and that is the wrong way to start this game is for Shy to get up if you are Incredible Miracle. All this happened because of Tucson donating those double buffs. Suddenly, Janna couldn't lane with Vayne, so couldn't lane with Jax and give Expression a fairly free lane against the Vayne. Now he's just eating huge harass every time he approaches a minion. Now it's actually panic stations for Expression. One of the reasons Jax fell out of the meta, apart from some nerfs, is the fact that he has a very expensive Koi. He's like Aurelia, he needs the Trinity Force, he needs damage into Tanky. And he's certainly not getting either very early, so that's a really nice hook from Adler. Yeah, official land, but Roar has the shield on him, not going to take any follow-up damage. Now, that said, in the top side, the Vayne still has to be careful because that Counter-Strike is absolutely brutal against AD carries, so uh -oh. if there's going to be any kind of gank up there, it could be troublesome for space. But you saw him just back away in that last trade once the Counter-Strike went off. Expression teleported as Elise was on the same side of the jungle, but they're not choosing to go for the turret dive. Uh, very hard to turret dive is Jax because of the Counter-Strike, as you mentioned. So. And level 6 now, the Level 6, the, the extra resist yeah. is going to be pretty relevant. But yeah, if Jax can stay up with Shy, which was going to be almost an assumption, but now it's so much harder because of the early shenanigans with the jungle, things are fine for expression. But suddenly, it's the timer for when Jax can successfully enter the lane against Shy. It's getting later, and that's where there's kind of room to play for if your CJ enters. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's getting a bit hairy. Hmm. For I am all the same. They're going to recall right now, but notice that the first recall timing from Roar, because of those double buffs, only allowed him to get the pickaxe. 
Going back for Amber's Blade, this is no longer going to be the bully lane that it could have been against the Vayne with the Cutlass and a Dagger already completed. So this is not going to plan for LZIM. If we're talking about a BF Sword versus Bilgewater, then the lane still becomes a bully one for Lucian. But as you get more attack speed and more levels into your tumble, which are usually maxing second, if you're this vein, you're just able to tumble out of the Q harass that comes through from Rowan. It just becomes so much harder to win those trades. When we're talking about that at nine minutes, does really shape for space to take over this game 25, 30 minutes in. Yeah, having these recall timings for 80 carries is so interesting because it does affect the landscape of the laning phase to such a significant degree. Uh, Ambition will be going for Cinder Hulk Elise. We've mm. seen the Rune Glaive, we've seen the Cinder Hulk. Uh, in this case, probably the better one because he has to be the primary tank on his team. And they're going to try here for Shy. There's so many more people coming. Yeah, Mad Life is there. There's the kick straight into not the Counter Strike. Couldn't actually land the stud in time. Tucson has to get back. They're just going to dive it straight up as Mad Life picks up another kill with the help of his Ignite. Mad Life doing work this game. I mean, he basically just soloed Tucson at the start of that because Tucson was in the wrong part of the jungle. But Expression, we said the same thing about players dealing with the sins of their teammates, Ambition in particular in game one. Now Tucson has really re removed any sort of lane pressure from Jax. Now his turret's gonna go down. Jax's only option is to passively farm to freeze the lane. And then there's just all this space for CJ to pick up Dragon after Dragon and history repeats. Yeah, definitely CJ. I think they caught a bit of a break here though, based off of Tucson's mistakes. Yep. Because this is not a team composition that I think should be successful in any kind of reasonable game. Now they haven't picked up a dragon yet, so they haven't really got any timers on this game. They've taken down the turret of Expression, but if Expression can freeze up and still impact a team fight and the minute, minute and a half when his uh, teleport's still available, maybe it won't be a big hole, but the items, the Trinity Force timing from Shy is certainly going to be markedly earlier than Expression can put together. Right, and it's the fact that they have to go for that same item, and Shy is always going to have that advantage, considering that he nearly doubled the farm, has the first Blood Gold, has Assist Gold now. It's just so unlikely that Expression is ever going to be at a point where he can split push against the Fizz in this game now. It's still a matchup that Jax traditionally does well in. If he can especially avoid that fish, he's just so sticky with the Trinity Force movement speed and the fact that he has such a short cooldown on the Q and has massive damage that mostly comes through abilities. So as the game scales on, if they can manage to wrestle back some of this lead, it'll be fine for the Jax, but especially now, he has to cower in fear because they have no jungle control on this side of the map and he's so far behind. Yeah, Ambition wants to come in for another dive. There's no wards to help out Expression right now. He doesn't know where this Elise is, but he does right now, trying to zone him off the tower. And there's the Grandmaster's Might. Ult goes off. Cocoon will miss as he uses the Leap Strike. Fish comes through, and goodbye, Expression. Coco there with the Wild Growth for the backup. Frozen now pursuing Ambition under the turret. Frozen gets the Chaos Storm off for the kill. Now, can they turn it around onto Shy? No, they cannot. Kill for Frozen. And another kill for Shy, still probably in CJ's best interest because they're forcing so much. Frozen again, flash heal to try and get into that fight. And they're forcing kills onto unideal members. Tucson picks up the kill credit, whereas Jax loses Ooh. CS, loses lane control, still falls further and further behind in terms of gold. Things are being piled down against Expression as raw. These trades, they're going better and better for CJ. Well, what do you expect? Those items are not built for trading if you are Roar on Lucian. Those items are built for banking. Yeah. And uh, I think Vayne's pretty happy when Lucian tries to bank in the laning phase. Someone, one of these two champions is going to be a lot higher damage in the late game. Don't tell OQ. He plays both of them, you probably can't choose. But uh, it's probably going to be the Vayne, like you mentioned. He's got the wild growth. He's got mad life in his pocket, so, yep, it's opposite day. What a weird series. Yep. <laughs> Very unusual play coming through. We usually get punished for drafting mistakes like both these two teams have made, and it just feels like on both sides there's obvious downsides that have not always been pressured yeah, just, by the enemy team. Just really fundamental errors that have led to snowballs, and even though the teams have tightened up play 
since those errors were made, it's still a bit puzzling how they got there in the first place. So if you opt into the ultra late game, we're talking 40, 45 minutes, because CJ, remember, don't have a dragon still at 14 minutes, so maybe the game timer will actually go to the 40, 45 minute mark. Free farmed Vayne versus a Jax that actually starts to get competitive in items, you know, both those champions are very proficient in the late game, so there's a lot of potential that Lulu might be able to kite out the Jax, but maybe in the late game, Jax can make up for the fact that Lucian can't really hold a candle to Vayne. Yeah, that's that is a possibility. Uh, there's also the fact that it should be a pretty early talisman onto Ignar again to help the Jax get into a preferential situation. Now look, if a dragon or two dragons are already gone down, I wouldn't even be entertaining this, but CJ, they haven't shown much interest around that objective. Yeah, it's shocking. They haven't taken that quite yet, but uh, especially on that recall right there from the Lucian as he tries to complete his Infinity Edge, but Blade already done for Space's Vein. Especially is spotted walking over the vision granted by the Scuttle Crab. Not sure why they keep opting in to fight, so I am, because they're just behind in levels, behind an item. Seems risky. Special does get a pink ward in spite of the hook. And Shy just freezing up in the top side forcing Expression to push very far up his lane if he wants to do anything at all, even though they have eliminated most of the wards that CJ managed to get into their jungle. So no Infinity Edge for Raw because he's going for the Avarice Blade, but credit to him is ahead in CS. John has certainly been more locked in lane than Madlock has been trying to make plays around, but crucially hasn't succeeded in the period that kind of mirrors the Blade of the Rune King being picked up. So if he doesn't make any pressure and Lucian's allowed to free farm, I mean, the passive gold, the basically bonus 10% gold you're getting with the plus two on every CS, might actually start to roll the gold towards Raw. Well, we'll see how many towers go down before that happens, because that global gold may end up tilting that over into Space's favor. So let's see how this dragon's going to go down. CJ finally gets it into their head that they want to go for it when they see Victor recall. It's going to be very, very late. Fifth Dragon win condition, even if they rush it down at 17 minutes. You add 24, that's the absolute fastest you could get them down. And we're talking 41 minutes when Jax will certainly be a pretty big factor this game. It's worth noting that if you've been watching the minimap in particular, because we haven't been seeing it on camera, already Shy is opting out of direct damage trades with Jax, despite the item advantage. Interesting. Well, we'll see. He didn't have the completed Trinity True. Force before, so that may switch back over to his favor now, considering that Expression doesn't even have a Sheen. But just warding up. No Dragon even taken there. CJ really being quite tardy when it comes to controlling this objective. Tardy is probably the right word. If this was a report card, certainly wouldn't be anything more than a C+. Shy's going for a walk, but he's just putting down vision. Just gets some wards in, does find a pink ward. He is all alone right there. He could get collapsed on by the victor. And nope, does have that playful trickster to escape. Ignar there with a double knockup, but enough members can get out via the urchin strike and the Lantern from Mad Life. So, so CJ see the hard freeze in top. They note that Expression really does not want to teleport down. He's excellently frozen and he just has this massive item disadvantage. I think I am opting into a fight here would be a massive mistake. Yeah, they've already delayed it enough. First Dragon at 18 minutes isn't really something they have to worry about. Oh, nice catch on to Roar. Flash comes through from Mad Life. There's the fish and the death of the Lucian, Cocoon coming through too. Good follow up, Mad Life showing some great thresh play this game. It's a bonus though, that IM did not have to give that up, it was just Raw was positioned too aggressively. The flay went wide, but the death sentence led into the CC triumvirate from the likes of Elise, from the likes of Fizz, and the pick power is massive once that first CC hits. Yeah, something we didn't talk about too much, but the Cocoon-Fizz combo with the uh, death sentence as well. With the death sentence and the vein, they have such high single target crowd control and burst that it is quite potent when it comes to picks. Why it's all the more puzzling that when they had lane control around bottom, why is it an 18 minute first dragon? Well, you put down some pink wards, you sweep out some brush, you cannot go anywhere near the dragon because of the sheer massive both single target CC and damage from the likes of Elise and Fizz. Yeah. 
it's not like they haven't had control over mid either because Coco has been dutifully clearing out the mid wave. All right, blue buff over to Coco right now after Ambition stole one away from LZIM. Lisa actually spotted out as he rotated up. Okay. Hmm. Uh, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> The stylish urchin strike straight into the dragon's rage. Expression should really be calling this off, but he does have a lot of friends. Yeah, and Shy coming back right now. There's ambition. Shy going to get the wild growth on him. Shy not going to live through the chaos storm. Lee Sin picks up the kills. Mad life here just to provide some defense as space goes one on one into roar. Blade the root queen ruin king pop. There's a flash to the side of the culling. Space is going to get this kill in the one v one. Really nice play from Space. That's what you can do with the Blade of the Rune King. Death Lens goes just wide onto Igna. But CJ starting to take over this game a little bit late in the timing, but they certainly have just so much more immediate power. I don't understand why I am a playing around an expression who must be sitting on a casual 2,000 gold. Yeah, that is, that is a lot of money right now. He's actually done a good job since that freeze of catching mm. up when it comes to CS. But at what cost? A couple of turrets, now a solo kill. All of this is flowing on because Expression has not been using that teleport. Has just been trying to freeze the lane up top and basically every advantage that CJ gets around the map is at the cost of Expression farming up. Well, it's the moment of truth. Trinity Force complete. Can he actually do anything? CJ going matter. for a sneaky little Baron here. Coco's in the bottom side. There's no way that LZIM thinks this is going down. It's not even the jungle. At least has excellent Dragon Baron control, but isn't even in the area. Victor's the only one who's walking close, but he's just going towards the Raptor. It's going to be a free Baron steal at 20 minutes by CJ. Enzo. Wow, CJ catching LZIM on a massive recall, gets a Baron for free. Just think about the percentage health damage. Fizz, Blade the Ruin King Vayne with the Silver Bolt, and Elise all doing percentage health damage. The Baron exploded. Yeah. Even without that many items yet, <laughs> Space doesn't even have a completed second item at this stage. Still able to take that Baron out with some efficiency. Tricky, tricky play from CJ. Coco in the bottom lane. I am realizes now that they've been had. And now CJ will have their mid turret. Operation take the mid turret. Victor has very good line wave clear, but even once you get that hex core upgrade, you cannot deal with these Baron buff minions in any re reliable sense. So Whoa. that's why it's going to take time, but CJ trying to push advantages right now. Well, I am um, can just 1 3 1 like they're doing, and there isn't an answer from. From IM or CJ's can 131, one, and there's not an answer from IM. The Shy Fizz is already nice and fed. Vayne ended with an advantage as well. Ignar is just going to have to bomb uh -oh. soon. And Expression gets in there, does get the knockup. Tucson picks up another kill. It's a big melee here. Shy with that wild growth. Now they turn on to Frozen. Frozen drops the gravity field. Shy gonna play for Trickster on top of Frozen. His damage already too much to handle. Tucson trying to clear out the wave with his smite, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Another good tornado from Ignar buys them time, but damage over time is the thing that takes out Tucson in the end, calling here to tickle a wave, but that's not, it's not going to stop Space from autoing this tower. And we already saw that in any sort of 1v1 matchup, Space has completely the ascendancy over Raw. They're going to keep pushing up the top lane. They're going to take out this inhibitor turret, and it's very much looking like a, a tight series. This, is, this was a very, very unusual game for champions. Lots of interesting decisions made by both teams, very unconventional deaths and plays, as well as a rather strange Baron, early Baron. So CJ pulling it out though, and Madlife setting this up with the help of Ambition. There is the knock up and away. Expression does try to pick up a kill, but once again, Tucson actually gets the gold for that one. Then with Coco there, Shy vastly too fed. Shy already has a Cowl too, so Frozen not doing very much damage. We're talking about Fizz versus Jackson, the 1v1 where Shy was really moving away from actually engaging in aggressively in these skirmishes when he has so much extreme mobility with the movement speed, with the playful trickster. That's exactly where Fizz shines. And once the QE was used by Jax, he couldn't get out. And that's what the result was, justifiably a big skirmish win for CJN. Absolutely massive. Another dragon is coming up. They still have not managed to crack tier one on this Baron, in spite of getting an inhibitor. Baron buff has expired just now, I believe. So 
Yeah, the tier one being up, the fact that it's only a single dragon to be spoken about 24 minutes. They haven't even cleared the second one, although it will come down momentarily. There's more wind in the sails for IM than there was for CJ in the previous match, but again, it's being very optimistic. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> particularly when the power is in the split pushers. It's in the vein and it's in the fizz right now. I am um, has to play pretty far back. In the meantime, Madlife will try and just threaten this victor off the turret with the death sentence, and he will succeed. Frozen decides it's just not worth it. How much can I am surrender to get their jacks ahead? We saw in the early game the trade-off really helped out people like Vayne, who's easily dealing with Raw in the split push, and the 1-3-1. It's just overpowering when Shy. He's the one who should have been held down by all the hijinks at level one, but Tucson dying. The result is this shy that no one can deal with. Yeah, and take a look here. Frozen actually had to use Flash in that last attempt to repel the siege because of a nicely aimed cocoon from Ambition. Just running forward with the Whimsy and the shield, making sure no one wants to defend. Just like Space, who won lane in the previous game but lost to all the pressure from the global stuff. And oh, here's the engage. And they're going to kick Mad Life in. Not the person you wanted, but he will die to Roar. It comes at the cost of two sin, and he, Mad Life actually gets the kill with the Ignite. So will this be the end of the pressure? Yeah, they could just stand there. The Super Minions are going to come back in just a moment, but they decide it's time to sweep through the jungle, get the buffs, and recall. And they just have complete control over both sides of the enemy jungle, just CJ and just Frozen. Every time he's used his flash, I mean, most of the time, it's just been to heal teammates who are getting invaded upon by the likes of Ambition, who looked a lot more at home on the Elise, but it feels like it was more by the hand of Tucson making a questionable decision early than by Ambition justifying the first pick Elise. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing happened in the first game. Jungler's dying early. Very interesting phenomenon, something we rarely see, especially for a couple of camps. I, I hope we don't see it in the next game. Should CJ win this one, which a they almost decided, certainly will. A series decided by level three jungle decisions. <laughs> Jeez. Please no, Papa Smithy. Please no. Elise has actually gone and picked up, I like this actually, he's gone and picked up the Banner of Command as Ambition. You look at the people split pushing, maybe that'll slow down Jax who's trying to clear waves. They're already doing so well in the one 3 one that whichever lane gets to promote a minion, probably is going to keep smashing down objectives. Yeah, and the Baron coming up in another minute, that's going to be very oh. nice. That was a blind hook. Right in there, he knew he had walked in there, but couldn't, oh he could see them, looks like, just barely. I think he was probably expecting a Raptor, yeah. but hey, he'll, he'll take Elise in. <laughs> he definitely saw Elise in walk in there, so. Okay. And the siege will continue right now as they walk up onto that tower. Have to be careful, culling already used. Not too much damage taken by the members of CJ. Space will eat a little bit of Victor's poke. But the big issue is that I am have had to send Frozen to deal with the Vayne Spitbush because Raw is dying every time he enters that lane. And suddenly, the reliable wave core in mid, it's gated around a quite long cooldown in terms of the culling. So this is actually very good for CJ Enders, where taking down this mid lane turret in particular should be the death now for I am. Well, they're going to try and get a kick again. Don't find bad life this time. Tucid gets fished, and it's not enough to finish him off either. Coco still just trying to glitter lance through the inhibitor turret right now. Baron is back live, and this is CJ's time to shine. No wards from IM. They know Tucson has been chunked. Tucson's still in base. Only now. Oh, there was a ward. Okay, so they did have one fortuitous ward, so I am actually playing a lot more aggressively than you expect in this situation. Ignar's going to face check. And there he goes. Has to pop the monsoon instantly. One more member of LZIM chunked out of his ability to contest this, although the inhibitor has come back up. They're still going to go for the Baron. Who is going to put down the ward to allow Expression to teleport in? Baron's at about 5,000 health at this point. I am only now assigned to peek towards it. All right, are they going to turn? Lantern down in the bit, Bad Life and Space over the side. They want to get the kill. Hook on a Frozen immediately. Frozen condemned into the wall and killed. Space quite low, but Summoner Heal will keep him alive. And now the Baron will be taken by Elise. Despite the fact that Expression got into the pit. 
That uh, smite too much for him to handle. The expression completely separated from any of his teammates as well. This is certainly a solo mission. Has flash, but not the time to use it, buddy. Yeah, they are going to force him to chase into the Tier 1. But in the meantime, Space is casually taking over the rest of the base with his help from Coco. And now they will move into the top side inhibitor to finish that objective off as well. Don't quite have the Lich Bane on Lulu, but still plenty of auto attack damage from the Vein. They take out both inhibitors. This game's definitely over, but I am probably not going to surrender it. Just play it out from here. Mad Life's been amazing this game. This is the Mad Life Thresh that I like to remember all the way back from Season 3. And look, he's been playing a lot of Braum recently, 5-3 and three after the loss in the previous game. This season, he's 8-2 and two on Thresh, so he's certainly instilled that same terror that he did on Thresh release a couple of years ago. Now, I'm just not sure if this is a champion that <laughs> they can play without these days as long as Ambition is in the roster. We just saw Ambition be much more activated because he had a reliable way to get out of the enemy jungle with that Thresh Lantern, and that has really been the story of Ambition season. Half Thresh on the team, Mad Life is always there, because Mad Life is having a really good season, actually. He's been in the, all the right places on the map. He was a major factor in their win over SK Telecom, because he stuffed so many of Faker's Twisted Fate gangs. And we can just hope that the bar that's 2-0 for Mad Life might actually be that third champion when Braum and Thresh are off the table because that champion can also do similar things in terms of jungle invades. Okay, needs a bit more setup, certainly needs clearer communication that has been an issue for CJ, but maybe that's another one that can fill the same role. Well, Alistair too is, uh, is a big pickup for Mad Life and always has been. So that's, uh oh, Coco has to flash away from the Lee Sin as the rest of his team collects a humongous minion wave. And one next turn already down. Nobody can defend against space right here. That is going to be a win for CJ Entis here in game number two. A very strange best of three this evening. Some weird picks, some weird plays, some weird decisions, but we're going to game number three. I understand that sometimes our viewers need to step away from the stream. Don't miss the first five minutes, because if we learned anything from the first two games, <laughs> game is going to be decided right there. Yeah. What a, it has been some nice snowballing, though, in this particular instance from each of these teams. Get that early advantage, get the kill onto the enemy jungler, totally take over the game, and CJ's split push with the Fizz and the Vayne ends up working, somewhat surprisingly, off of those early advantages. It's a bit worrying, though, that if you remove her on the blue side, just like they were in game number two, and let's see what they pick here. Twisted Fates will once again be the ban. It's been banned a lot on the blue side in particular. We're waiting to see what the answer will be. Victor has been a very high priority first pick. A status just because the champion pawn and general engaged champions either been banned or completely ignored by both teams. And we saw the Elise first pick last game in spite of the victor being available, which we thought was the more logical pick for Coco. I still would have preferred that. I think Ambition did do pretty well on the Elise, but not outstanding. Agree with you there. Shen basically been a must ban, but surprisingly a blue side ban. Well, they banned Shen on the blue side in the last game, too. Sure. Uh, I think Shen is a better blue side ban because you're not going to first pick Shen, and you could first round Shen on the red side. That makes sense. So take that away. You'll notice that they're just stripping away all of LZIM's methods for getting a lot of globals up. They've liked to run Echo TP. They've liked to run in the mid lane. They've liked to run Shen. So that has been something that has been working for them recently and came into play in their victory in game one of this series. So we have the same bands as we did in the last game, just slightly different order. Will the Annie be the choice? CJ banned Callista Rise TF on the red side, so we don't really get any insight there. And yes, identical bands. Question is, is the Azir coming through from Longju IM once again? I think they're confident I am, you know, they can maybe add the one global, as you mentioned, with the teleport echo into the victor. So they're probably happy to give up the victor just to play a match they seem confident on. They ban the Elise, so Azir is available. 
where does the priority lie between Azir and Victor is the question, especially with the adjustments towards Azir on patch 514. Uh, generally speaking, we've seen Victor rise in priority due to Azir's nerf, even though Azir still has a strong laning phase versus Victor. Uh, those nerfs do hurt some of his late game power when it comes to his versatility in creating picks or engaging. Obviously, Coco is still an extraordinarily good Azir player, certainly one of the best in the world at that champion. They've been most happy opting into the likes of Azir Shen, as you mentioned, for Azir to make the picks, which Shen banned. And, and Azir's reliability in the engage decreased. Maybe the Azir priority also will decrease from CJ. We're not sure, but at the moment, at least thinking about picking up the jungler. Still haven't seen any Gragas this uh, particular match. Which is surprising because Tucson actually did quite well on Gragas against KT. Opens up with the Rek'Sai to CJ. Will Tucson go to the Lee Sin a third time? It won them the first game. It went a long way to costing them the second game. So does he have his eye in for it or does he want to go somewhere else to the Gragas like we were just mentioning? I think you I think you should mix it up here. Go for the Gragas. Lee Sin really did work well for you in game one. And, you know, it, it could have worked out well in game two. I like the philosophy behind picking the Lee Sin Lucian combo. Get that bottom lane rolling early, and they could take an extremely early vein. So disengage from the jungle and a hyper carry from Good. the AD carry. Well, Coco. This is what I wanted to see in game one from IM was Gragas with the vein. They ended up snowballing with the Lee Sin, but that was. Not due to the composition at all, more due to poor play from Ambition. But this synergy that we saw at the beginning of this season in Champion Spring fell out of use for a while. Vayne Grog is now back, but it is a potent combo because it basically guarantees Vayne 1v1s in teamfights. Let's conceptualize Azir as a champion and say, okay, the engage option, it was never really thought of as an engaged champion when he was released. And then, of course, the Azir set plays opened our eyes to his engagements. With the Shen banned away, with the fact that the engage is now less reliable, one thing he can always do is the disengage. So, after think space, he's gonna go straight back to the well with the Kog'Maw this game. Yeah, and that Azir Kog'Maw combo has been a very vital part of CJ's success. Space knows how to team fight with that, so does Coco. They work very well to get the Emperor's Divide in the right place during those team fights and to create the zone so that Space can be successful. So just suddenly, you don't maybe have the engage, still can do it, but you're not picking it for the engage, but the disengage, that was not touched by the changes that Riot put through. No. Well. Could it be the Echo again, or will it be the victor? Frozen may have to take a little bit of a backseat in the laning phase. It certainly will not be Lux unless you want to get crushed by Azir in lane. It's unlikely to see the Lux. We can dream about some of these off-meta picks. A lot of different options open to IM. They might take a page out of CJ's books and go for the Lulu themselves, but Victor definitely does loom as the most likely option. Yes. And there's a Nautilus lock. That's something we haven't actually seen in a while. Okay, it's back. And remember, Frozen is a player who actually took a game off of Samsung Blue last year with his Lux. He is a really good at Lux. And Lux has seen a lot of small buffs, specifically the ability to explode the uh, E directly as you cast it. So just like Gragas had that change many moons ago, Lux has it as well. Now she still has very high mana costs and just is going to have massive issues wave clearing. Because remember, Victor, he spends a thousand gold and suddenly he can match Azir's wave clear. If we see Nashor's Tooth or Stinger Rush Azir against a Lux, the wave clear is going to be landslide in the advantage of the Azir to what? Level 11? Some really late part of the game with blue buff as well. If you start assuming all these things and then say the jungle control goes towards CJ enters, mid lane control will never be achieved by the Lux. Well, I think the Lux pick here has affected the AD carry pick. They see the Lux, they want to go for the Sivir instantly. Kill the control mage. Yep, just run her down in this particular composition. They have the Fizz here, which is also going to be strong against Lux. Lux has very low mobility and she is really, 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 really squishy. She has a very low base HP, and you have to play her pretty much from behind walls, but that won't save you against a Fizz. And I don't even really know how this laning phase is going to work. You would think that Coco would be easily able to poke her out. That's what I'm saying. The wave clear advantage, the wave control advantage is going to be there. And so if mid lane is going to be very well pushed up, it's going to open up Shy to, re sorry, open up Ambition to really play aggressively. 
with the jungle or Xi. You have to give up so much to make Lux work. It's a bit like why we don't see Anivia, both of them. Low base stats, both of them. Low mobility. Good wave clear, certainly, later in the game, but will the trade-off be worth it? My initial opinion is no, but look, they've locked it in, and it's nice to see the re-debut of Lux after a long period of absence. And it's always frozen, right? It's always incredible miracle here in Korea doing that. So it will be a support Nautilus, another champion that we haven't seen since some of those Nautilus E nerfs. But it's there, and that also probably contributed to the Sivir pick. Just go ahead, Spell Shield, the Nautilus Ultimate. Very easy ability to make sure you do not get hit by. And even though CJ, they go for the Fizz again without that primary engage force, at least they have a Sivir. And hooking this Lux and getting onto this Lux, if Lux is standing over a wall, because we think about Lux, okay? Needs to stand behind a wall in a team fight. But Rek'Sai will just tunnel under a wall, Fizz will hop over a wall, Hook will go over a wall. There's not a lot of safety here for Frozen. Where is he going to go to avoid all of this? The big issue, as you were mentioning, there's not excellent primary engage, but there is a Sivir ultimate and multiple different people getting onto a squishy backline mage. So CJ, they can play aggressively, they can kite backwards. Lux means that Gragas, Nah, Nautilus, all going to be need to peel for the very squishy high damage backline. Yeah, fortunately they have a good front line to do that, but I'm still worried about Lux. There's a reason why we don't see her in a lot of standard meta play, and it's her vulnerability. So, can Frozen survive the laning phase? Can he survive some of these team fights on his Lux, his longtime pocket pick? LZIM versus CJ Game 3 right now. CJ versus Incredible Miracle, Game 3. Fans going wild for the Lux skin <laughs> and Lux in general. It's also Frozen. Frozen is very popular with the ladies here in Korea. And with those dance moves, who can argue? <laughs> this is actually the first time I've seen this skin. It's a really cool skin. Okay, so five-man stack in the top side of the river from LZIM on the invade right now as they start to get some wards down. See which of these lane matchups they necessarily want. Same thing going down with CJ in the bottom side jungle. So mirrored invades right now, nothing too unusual. And we're waiting to see if the lane swap comes through. Interesting to see who's actually trying to dodge the laning matchup. I guess maybe the Vayne Nautilus in the very early game against Sivir Thresh, which has more reliable options, but nothing really shouts out as a must avoid in terms of the laning matchups. And there is Frozen. Wow. Uh, it was prepared. Very timely. Prepared in advance. Collusion. Uh, printed out and laminated. Frozen with that the wand from that Lux skin. Of course, he is a very famous Lux player, so it's exciting to see. It's not something we've seen for a long time. Mad Life is going to get cheesed as he gets hooked into the brush, but doesn't have to even burn his flash right there. There's simply not enough damage. So they actually do go in for the aggressive steal early on. Same thing from CJ. That'll be a nice advantage in the 2v2, chunking Mad Life out early. This is what we expect to see. Frozen definitely on the back foot in mid. So how much of this sort of jungle pressure will Tucson be able to put forward? Because of course, when he tried to go for some unassisted pressure last game, that's what really bit IM's demise. Well, there's our stats right for Frozen. One and one on that box. But it was a really big win for IM number two when he played it. And Dade got crushed. Uh, uh, Roar? Um, Roar must have eaten the wrong part of a hook, and he has to use two summoners to escape Mad Life just with the Ignite, and that is an inauspicious start to this laning phase for LZIM. Really been mixing your metaphors and really leveling down some of your criticism this game, so very nice <laughs> use of diction there, Monty. I wasn't mixing my metaphors. 
Just saying inauspicious. See, that's a, you you hide criticism with fancy words, Papa Smitty. Don't you know that? That's interesting for you to say, Mos <laughs> Oh, boy. I, I cast a lot of LPL. I also learned how to use words like interesting. <laughs> Did you use inauspicious? Maybe once or twice. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice word. It's a, it's a good one. And you know how critical I am, so when I say that I'm hiding criticism with fancy words, imagine how critical I could be. Isn't that a terrifying thought? Right, understand. <laughs> so Raw is still level one against probably soon to be level three space they can freeze land, yeah, they're both level three in the top lane. Oh jeez, this is a now just a total disaster. That recall timing, the only thing you can get is potions too, so... Okay, this is going to be a rough ride unless they can get some sort of pressure in that lane, but guess what? Lux is not a mid laner who's going to be helping you against an Azir right here because Azir will control the wave pressure. I'm worried that we're going to look back at just the poor trade that Raw took at level 1, forcing both summoners just like the two jungle invades in the first two games that really decide the game because you already know the pressure's not going to be there from Lux. Gragas already has a lot of work to do just to baby Frozen through the laning phase. You can't also have the same problems in top especially. Well, probably should pick Bane in that case, right? But yep. here we go, Frozen. Has to run out. Ambition with the tunnel coming in. Flash knockup. Frozen gets the chilling smite. And Frozen has to flash out. Coco goes in. Mad Life is here. Gets a hook onto Tucson. First blood for Mad Life. And Mad Life was completely untethered from the top lane because of all the issues. They would have roam mid, get the kill involvement, get the first blood. The games are logical, but the starts are certainly illogical. And what leads to them? I don't, I don't understand. This has been one of the most bizarre series. We not only have weird pocket picks coming out left and right from Incredible Miracle, we have very sloppy and strange starts to these games that result in these overwhelming advantages because at this level of competition, th that kind of a mistake from Roar can cost you the entire game. And look, again, sadly we may look back to say that anyway. Ignaz on the faster retreat. He's taking a very questionable path, has to flash anyway. Get All summoners gone bar Ignite in the top lane yeah, for the duo. Yeah, they just get everything they want. Mad Life's Ignite almost back up. So they can go aggressive again if they want it. And another first blood to CJ, who is out scrapping IM. I will say that as far as CJ goes in these last two games, it's been good to see them picking up kills early. So they're not dependent on their team fighting. Uh, one criticism we've leveled against CJ is, well, your early game is pretty bad, you make mistakes, you tend to die, but you're good enough at team fighting and shot calling in the late game that you can come back. In fact, we saw that against SK Telecom to a certain degree, but now they're showing up with more skirmishing power. They're playing more aggressively, especially around that mid lane, and they are doing work. But how much of that is to be leveled at kind of IM with some questionable picks, with questionable early play, with very nice skin choices, though? The crowd very well, much does enjoy that. But when you're ready, carry on top, who needs to apply pressure, has that sort of a trade. Speaking of trades, expression, he's dead. Just a straight up solo kill. The Ignite not being respected. And it, wow. Nara is probably Expression's best meta champion. We see it banned sometimes against him, but Shy gets in there, has the double Doran's Blade and the Amp Tome already. He had an item advantage and a summoner advantage with that Ignite. Not respected by Expression, and that will be it in the end. Expression so. was a long way behind in CS, pushed the lane up as the back was coming through from Shy, who just walked back to lane. And then just in the wrong spot, ate the fish. Just trying to create pressure, I guess, because he already knows no pressure in mid. He already knows that after that early trade, there was little to no hope of pressure from the Vayne and Nautilus. Oh, the double pink cheese coming through. Now, are they going to go for it? They are going to go in. Frozen with the chilling smite on him, and he gets knocked back by the wall. Frozen gets a nice double bind, but it's not going to be quite enough. Ambition is holding off. He's going to have to take it with the Prey Seeker. Didn't want to do that, but ends up having to do that. And look at this, we see the Nasher's Tooth coming in from Coco again, just like we see against most of the victors. Get a ton of auto attacks, push, 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 push that wave, kill the tower, control the low mobility mage. And this is the exact sort of play that we'd expect from a team like SKT, who'd look at Frozen and understand, very blue buff reliant, very big early 
a wave control advantage from Coco. Pick a champion like Coco, get the CS, take down the turret at eight minutes, I guess, but push it in, and there's just no answer for Frozen when there's no pressure on the map. Now, I know IM has nothing to play for, and I know it's the last game of the season, and Frozen is a fan favorite Lux player. Maybe that play didn't do it, but from my perspective, Lux into his ear is pretty much just like a worse victor. Yep. I don't see a reason not to pick the victor when you have the Lux up. Lux does a lot of interesting things. It's just that CJ were the one that made the adjustments. They locked in the Sivir, and then suddenly running such a squishy, immobile mage becomes just a complete... It's just not possible. If it was the Cogmore, maybe you had an option if the early game had gone a bit better for LZIM. But in this situation, it's all over. It's also the first time in this series I've actually liked the Fizz pick. I think the Fizz pick is good here because of the way that that these, these pick and ban is played out because you have the Vayne and the Lux, which are champions that Fizz can get on top of very easily. But is it any coincidence that CJ drafts look great when the likes of Thresh and Azir are available? Suddenly everything <laughs> else slots into the right spot. And the comp looks smart, they've played around it great. Okay, Raw kind of handed it to them on a silver platter, ensuring that this duo lane will be behind for the majority of the laning phase. But CJ in general, playing like the team, playing like the position on the ladder that they currently occupy. Well, it also shouldn't be surprising because, uh-oh, Mad Life with a long, oh, flash misses, or flame misses, but they do pull the flash out of Frozen, and the mid lane dominance will continue here. Speaking of dominance, Raw actually pops his ult. Space was the one who had the lane control. They spotted Thresh in mid lane and tried something, but only the ult can be drawn, and an ult trade is certainly not a big one to consider with Space. No, that flash trade, much more valuable for Frozen because look at what Goku can do now. Absolutely fearless as he knows he's got his team on the top side jungle. They may want to go for a dive right here. They want to wait for this Meganar to run out. So they're going to go for the Krugs in the interim. Meganar's about eight seconds. And you can see already Thresh moving away. Space is going to get turret dive. Finally being paid for Thresh roaming so heavily. Okay, solo kill. Well, not a solo kill, but a solid kill for Raw. Really late spell shield right there. Got hit by absolutely everything. And then used his spell shield to do nothing. Hmm. Couldn't block an auto attack with that, so. Space not perhaps as on his toes as he could have been, but they will get a tower for it. So I am makes the dive, makes the play, and gets their first turret of the game. The upside for Space is that literally all he needs to do this game is press R when there's at least three people next to him. That's, that is very true. No skill cap required. Shy and Coco can do most of the work here. Absolutely. They can do that heavy lifting. And now Coco, who has been chunking this tower down ever so diligently, will get hooked with the dreadline. No follow up though. Frozen's got no mana, and that's the reality of Lux's laning phase. Your mana cost on your E in particular, your only true wave clear outside of your ultimate, is absurd. And with the lack of jungle control and dragon, their own, their own friendly blue buff aren't going to be easily picked up at all. But I am. That's all Lux can do is put out two, three spells, be out of mana, and just wait for someone to flash on top of her and kill her. Yeah, and the, the recall timing right there, due to lack of mana, let CJ take a dragon that they really didn't have a whole lot of right to take because their bottom lane was pushed back to tier two and space was just sitting there farming. They not only got the farm out of the bot lane and pushed the wave back, they got the dragon and Azir one out in that mid lane. It is all going CJ's way right now. Feels a bit like a certain Teemo pick a couple of years ago at Worlds. Maybe, maybe they have some similarities. I'm not sure. You think I am would be a little bit more desperate in this situation, but you know, frankly, from I am, we've seen significantly better play out of them in the last two best of threes than we have beforehand this season. They did really give a, a good run with KT and took this series to get three games too. The puzzler for them is, where do you go with the roster? Because you've got Frozen and Ignar, these guys have played every match. These guys are certainly going to be on the team, barring a big offer coming from a larger organization. Let's think of them as the keepers. From what you've seen of the other players, who are you keeping around and who's you know going to go out to the pasture? Uh, I, I think it's hard to say for Mady Carey because we haven't actually seen much Paragon or Sunstar. I think that you 
I think you definitely keep Tucson because in spite of the one bad game he had last time, he also ridiculously carried you in the first game of this series. And Spooky's young, so they'll probably keep him around as a substitute. The top lane is the big question mark because, look, a lot of us love expression, especially us old OGN Legion fans as Space has to run away once again. But does he still cut it? I don't know. I don't know either. Had a solid first game. His Shen play was really good in conjunction with Tucson. Tucson actually going to get collapsed on here, but will body slam out of danger. Coco has just been unleashed on the map now because he's got the Azir turret right there. He can roam wherever he wants. He has the pressure down onto the mid lane. And here he comes. Coco going to come into this one. Ambition already very low. Ambition will get lanterned out, but not quite going to die yet, but there's Expression coming in with the TP. Now, does CJ Antis fight this? The answer is no, just backing off. Space will split off back towards the bottom lane. Coco has to flash himself as he gets hooked in. Expression, is he actually going to get a kill here? Coco gets out by moving the Sand Soldiers. Now, Shy wants a kill. Expression about to hit that Meganar form. A really delayed teleport from the Fizz. CJ, I think, were calling Shy to try and split push this outer top lane turret. They were hoping that they could get away with the minimum of summon as well. As Coco could have ulted much earlier and probably not had to flash. Ended up having to use everything and draw the teleport. So, objectively, that does help Ayan. They don't lose that outer top turret, but. Still, a bit of sloppy play from CJ. Yeah, definitely. Well, they still have an Ignite, and they still look like they want to dive in spite of the lack of fish here, and that's what they're going to do. Get Frisky here with Gentle Benar under the turret, and Ignite is down, and that's a kill for Shy, and a Lantern right back into the minion wave. And while Expression wasn't tied, it just didn't have enough time to build up Rage, and maybe they'll still get that turret they've been shooting for. And that's back off for now, Ignar. Already up in the top lane. They will see him with a Warden Tri Brush. Boom. And ults used to clear the minion wave. Frozen lucky enough to get a blue buff now. That's a plus. Took 15 minutes. Desperately needed. Suddenly has pretty good wave here despite. And this is awkward. 15 minutes. Still doesn't even have the Athenes on Holy Grove. Just now picking it up. Yeah, that's, that is going to hurt. Tucson with the crab control. And Coco actually getting some MR now. Looks like he may be going Abyssal. Uh-oh. Two's in. It's knocked up. Chilling Smite down. And there's a great hook onto the end. Space easily chasing down Tucson's Gragas. And Coco tries to box him in. Here's another dive from CJ Entis. Hook going to be dodged out by the final hour, but it's not going to be enough. Pink Ward laid down right next to the turret. And that means there is no more hiding from Vayne. There's just no hiding from the CJ team in general. They're just completely skirmishing around. It's always three members, high mobility, the Sivir ultimate just to really guarantee things. From that amp tome in the infantry, Frozen's probably going to go for the emergency Lux build and build the Magi's next. And might look like some sort of genius if big throws come through from CJ. But this is something Dade loves to do in the LPL, and it very rarely works. <laughs> the Lux or the Emergency Magi? Emergency Magi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like I haven't seen any of those M3 games, but. Uh, oh, he loses to Lux quite a lot. <laughs> but. <laughs> Please don't build Emergency Magi in solo queue. Don't do it. There's a time and a no. place. No, do not encourage them, Papa Smithy. That is the wrong thing to do. They are the free people, <laughs> they can do as they please. <laughs> Papa Smithy supporting Medjai's for the common man. Freedom of item choices. <laughs> I'm known to build AP on my Zinjiao sometimes. Uh, okay, great. You know? So, yep, you're one of the people everybody hates. Hey, man. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. <laughs> I'm just here to save Solo Q. You're here to destroy it. And here we go. They are here to destroy Frozen. Flash play and locked up until the bitter end is Frozen, dissolving in a sad pool of light on the ground. Question is, is Frozen having fun? Because, you know, <laughs> pick the locks, it wasn't ideal. It's their last game of the season. I don't know if he's having much fun. Well, maybe he'll sit there and think wistfully of more fun times. Coco gonna get grabbed, but the Emperor's Divide is still up, and he's feeling pretty confident underneath his passive turret. Just walk backwards, right over 
Into the Dragon Pit. There it is, Monte Cristo. Magi's acquired. <laughs> I knew it. It's a Lux I, special. Yeah, of course. Uh, definitely makes sense, given the Lux, given the situation. And because if you can get into late game as Lux and you get into 5v5s, you, hello, Space has to use his ultimate right there. No one else feels like tangling with the Gnar. The basic theory is that if all your spells are over a thousand range, you know, if you die, there's probably bigger problems than your Magi's right <laughs> Yes. That is all too true. And will they be able to get this turret? Shy, the last point of defense, and he is Fizz, so the answer will be yes. Everyone else will get there from CJ for the defense of a possible tier two, however. And now, Expression, who has built a black cleaver this game. Well, that is not going to be helpful in the least to you in any capacity. I mean, if you I don't know why you would. I don't know why you would build Black Cleaver into Fizz. If you were snowballing and you had a Hex Drinker Black Cleaver at this sort of a time, or at least with, uh, with this close to finishing the Black Cleaver, okay, maybe, but... Yeah. Maybe, I guess you could turn it into a Spirit Visage, I guess, theoretically. It does have the same item build path, but realistically, as you mentioned, that's a bit questionable. Yeah, really weird pickup in this game. And now they find him. They don't expect to find him on the Krugs, but there okay. he is, has to gnar them into the wall. And Space, not going to get knocked out. Ignar has his dredge line interrupted. A big ult, a big final spark, but it's just not enough. Double kill for Space. No kills for Frozen. No stacks for Frozen on his Magi's. He layered the spells ideally. He got the massive burst combo, but... No AP to back it up, just a result of being systematically destroyed in mid lane. Basically, every time someone could visit mid lane, they were drawing a summoner or killing the Lux. Out of time is going to keep going down, and Shy's feeling frisky. And there we go. There's the. Oh, no, miss on that. Ambition has to get out on the lantern as Roar starts to turn it. Ambition within one auto attack of being dead. Expression now trying to chase him down with the slope of the boomerang. Space is certainly dead to rights, and there's a couple kills from LZIM. Coco wasn't there. He was off in the mid lane, and that means that just a few low members after that last skirmish. Expression hungry for more. Ambition on the jet ski. Hit it with the boulder. Finally, we now know what wins between the boulder and the jet ski. <laughs> the answer is the jet ski. No derailing that man's fun. Please do not try that and do that at home. That lady's fun, my bad. <laughs> no boulders into jet skis. Responsible jet ski use. Jet skis do not win versus boulders in real life. Don't they? No. Well, you'll have to try it, Papa Smithy. <laughs> I'll get the camera. <laughs> Mom, the camera. <laughs> oh dear. It's a funny old game, League of Legends. It is. I think it's funny that Lux's giant pink tickle beam is not doing much of anything this game. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. She has no items, she's been crushed. Things just gone. Very poorly for I am, but at least she's the same level as Coco. Honestly, with the draft, I don't know if they expected to win. <laughs> I, I question that as well, Thomas Vendy. Hmm. I question that as well. Definitely not going to be a fond goodbye to IM for the season, it seems. Seems like they're going to... Oh, I don't know about that. I actually think they played very well in Game 1, and they played well versus KT. The only reason I ask about the, their roster is that IM has always been on the cusp of putting together a roster that was competitive. There was a time where I am number two, finally seemed to have put together a lineup that could compete, but they just need to keep changing things. Things like Lilac still being on the lineup in 2015, much as he's a bad luck charm, I wanted to say good luck charm, but they don't do a lot of winning. So much as he's been a long standby. He's been there the whole time, I know. too. I know. Maybe he is the root of all the problems. I don't think it's... I don't think it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, total vision dominance from CJ around the Baron pit, but I am did get some wards into the river, so they can tell that it's not being done. They probably should not walk into pick country. You know that CJ around the red buff. have taken their foot off the gas and that 
that's two blue buffs in a row that Frozen's been able to put up. Yeah, he really shouldn't have those. That is certainly the buff you want to play around. The bottom side of the map, the dragon and the blue buff wins you this game because this is nothing Frozen can do without blue buff for Manic Draw, just like in a Nivea in a very similar situation. Yeah, they're also playing for picks on the top side while they could be getting vision around dragon right now with it up in only a minute. Instead, they just get seen and have to recall. They'll be there in plenty of time for the drag, but... I, there wasn't any threat. If you want to posture like that, you actually have to make sure they can't see the Baron. Because otherwise, there's there's no way that anyone with a brain is going to walk into that jungle just to die. Special finally has Black Cleaver and the Spectre's Cow. Two levels behind, though. I'm interested in this duel. I'm interested to see what Black Cleaver contributes, like you said, because there is a Frozen Heart, so the Black Cleaver is getting some value at least. It's just a bit of a head scratcher. Wow. The, the Black Cleaver, only the big ticket item on NAR right now. Otherwise, just a Spectre's Cowl. And he spent a lot of money CJ. on his boots, I guess. Oh. Flash after the Silver Ult hmm. goes through. It's no. a trade. It's all right. It was Ignar's Flash, though, so not, not exactly the Flash that you're trying to get. And finally, Dragon will come up. They made an attempt. Around that Baron pit, but they will turn back to the Dragon in the end. Space already there. Space going for a Blade of the Ruined King as his third item. I mean, why the hell not? There is no armor on the enemy team, and there are two inherently, three inherently tanky champions, so Blade probably a good pickup. And honestly, you can just Blade the Vein and try and blow her up. And there's the potential that even in the 1v1 that's so lopsided in the advantage of Raw, if you're able to keep up in items that... Yeah, it's not a bad pickup when there's the likes of Expression trying to chase you down with the consistent CC of the boulders. Okay, well, they're coming in from behind. Expression all on his own, and there's a play. Sand Soldiers are there. Space doesn't have any follow-up with his ultimate, though, remember. But the hook, the hook comes through. Coco with the kill. The hook is true. 1-0 and 7. 80% kill participation for Mad Life. Maybe not quite MVP status this game, but just doing Mad Life Thresh things. Yep. I don't know. He really helped out in that first attempt at the mid lane. He uh, actually was probably the major one who drove back Roar in the top side because we saw that Ignite burning and he must have gotten some sort of player hook. But the big one that drove behind I am is Frozen, picking Lux. The picks this series, Papa Smithy, this has not been a benchmark for stellar drafting tonight. Nope. Lucent actually takes the fish. And now Ambition and Shy over the wall. Roar's already there. Can they get the damage down? Uh, they have a split call right now. There's the beam. Not going to be a steal or anything quite yet. Expression low on the outside. No one from CJ dying quite yet. Shy falls. A big split call right there. From CJ, Coco gets jumped on top of. What is Coco going to do now? Bends Ooh. it around. A beautiful Azir play, but unfortunately it doesn't actually hit anybody, but it was pretty sick to watch. The bend it like Coco. Curve it like Coco, Papa Curve Smithy. It like Coco. Get My it apologies. right. <laughs> I, I, I succeed to you, sir. Well, nice one. They think about trying the Baron, but realistically don't have the option to do so. Rex, I can just tunnel back in. Yeah. You can take a blue buff, but... No real game chaining advantage is coming from a nice team fight win by IM. Yeah, split call, of course. We saw two members of CJ hopping over that wall. They didn't realize that everyone was already there. Shy just going to TV back in, and here comes Frozen in the river. Two's in there, too. Can they actually dissuade Shy? They can. He used his ignite to get the. Oh. Um, well. Well, hello, Rek'Sai. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that much damage to kill the Vayne right now. Vayne Lux. Base stats, certainly not that high. <laughs> okay, well, red buff takeaway. And now another Baron attempt. Do they have the vision control to pull through? They have one sweeper off cooldown. And they have a couple pink wards. They have two sin who is stealthily waiting in the brush. And just looking for a steal, I guess. Doesn't have the most health or mana, but understands the Baron threat that's put forward by CJ Antis. 
They're actually going to wait for Roar to get back up right here. Tuzan has been standing here on half HP for quite some time. We can guarantee that Rek'Sai doesn't know he's there. Yes, no one knows that Tucson is there. If they can get a kill off of this, it would be impressive. Now he's going to come from behind. Explosive cast Whoa. will be spell shielded. Nice reaction. That was... He just certainly did not have vision or any no, prior knowledge. No, he just saw the barrel. Very impressive play. Uh-oh. <laughs> Trying to get it a move. Ambition gets body slammed over the wall. Mad Life there with the hook. Boomerang blade. Gets some more damage down onto Tucson, and that may be enough damage for them to start this Baron once again. Nope, Shy has no TP and is in the bottom side. So scratch that one. CJ now much more apprehensive about this Baron than they were previously. Don't have an Aegis, but with Lux being so far behind, it's not really a big consideration. Those ults have been hitting from Frozen. They're just not doing the damage. And that lack of a second item, Medjai has delayed this build so, so far, given how well held Frozen was in the laning phase. Yes, yeah, he was held back really significantly. So, Mad Life actually recalling an award right there. That will not be effective. And a very slow Baron attempt from CJ Entis. Still have the five Dragon Mark to fall back on. It's a minute 17, so about a 36 minute fifth dragon potential. So yeah. maybe that's the safer win condition that CJ are focusing on. Because as you mentioned, the split call was the only reason I am have just a glint of a window into this game. It's still the 9,000 gold advantage. CJ could just force this bear in whenever they want effectively. And if they don't have a split call around it, they can just finish off the, the game and the team fight right there. Definitely opt into team fights early. If you see this Black Cleaver on Nar, then the Nar build in particular not suited for team fights. It's suited for trying to hold down Shy, but Shy, very, very strong. Has the Frozen Heart to go along with the Trinity Force, doing a lot of work in team fights. Even just applying that Frozen Heart aura in the back line and sitting on top of Vayne, by far doing his job better than anything Expression can hope for. Yeah, and no Frozen Heart either from I Am. Frozen Heart, a very useful item against Azir. And Azir, that, Fizz. Yep. Uh, space. Yep. Doing a lot of work here, but no one's going to be getting it any time in the near future. Looks like they're settling on the Aegis coming through from Tucson, given the Ruby Crystal, no Magic Mantle, and the inventory. We'll just hope it's not Spirit Visage. Hmm. Okay, Tucson gets knocked up, gets out with the E, and I guess they just want to split push with Shy right now. He's gotten an immense amount of farm as he's pushed the wave all the way from his tier two up towards the enemy base. Baron control is pretty good, but of course Sightstone wards and warding totems being popped over to ensure no simple taking of the Baron, but Dragon, certainly simple, academic even. Hey, yep, 36 minutes 45, that's when fifth Dragon's gonna come online. Yeah, they didn't even need Ambition there, actually. They had enough wards that Space could have done that himself, and Ambition could have been posturing around the Dragon, but they decide to go for the ultra-safe take, even if that does leave Coco a bit more exposed on the top side of the map. And now Space just continuing to push forward. He should just double back through the enemy jungle right now, clear out this pink ward. Uh-oh. Oh, he gets interrupted on the lantern, now pushed out. Space ends up somehow very far away, and that's a dodge onto the final spark. Mad Life gets out, but here comes Coco right into the middle of the fight. Has to back away as Vayne begins to kite, but they get two when everything is over. And CJ looked like they were going to be get, to get caught out there, but it looked like space was barreled away and then condemned away. I couldn't really catch what happened in that fight. Certainly a weird interaction, but Frozen once again falling down comfortably. They get the pick on Tuzan, actually push him into the Baron pit. Oh, oh, oh. And there you go, Coco with another kill. Zonia's on the outside, wants to stay alive, pops over to, to the other side of the Baron wall, and now Shy starting to clean up alongside space expression on the run expression has no defensive items remember cj pile on the kills they've actually kept the baron leash it's at 2000 health gonna fall low gonna secure that objective actually just to the auto attack coming through i guess the chilling smite might have been used by ambition 
and that's probably finally the, the big advantage they need to just ignore the fact that Frozen has very good wave clear at least every 30 seconds or so on the Lux and just turret dive and end this game. Yeah, they can power on through now. They could probably could have before. Let's take a look at what happened. I think Mad Life may have died to Baron, but that was a nice turnaround as Tucson tries to get on through. But the Zonya's put enough time just to have the other spells up to go over the wall. <laughs> Expression tried to predict with the ultimate, but it went wide. A bit like his Nar play in general this game, certainly left a bit to be desired. The item build means he doesn't really have these tank stats. He just becomes almost a reset or just a squishy member for the Fizz to assassinate. Yeah, that's kind of what we've been seeing over and over and over again this game. Mad Life did die to the Baron there as the rest of his team was a little bit leery of leashing it. 1-1-12 one, one and 12 though. Doing his job. It's the Thresh. It's always been the Thresh. Still pretty damn good. Yeah. And has that highest kill participation on his team has been there. For CJ Antis today. So Always impressive when someone has more kill participation than a Siva. <laughs> fair point. Fair point. It's been unleashed from the bottom lane. Done some roaming though. Which the reason why space doesn't have as many kill involvements. Nice light binding lands onto space, but just doesn't have the damage behind it. The thing about Lux, you need the AP, but also to layer all those skills, you just don't have that one shot potential. And there we go. Is this going to be the last team by Roar in the front line? Actually getting a lot of damage out onto Ambition, but he's going to get bumped oh. out by Coco with that ultimate showing that those E nerfs don't matter. He's still got it in him. And Ignar on the outside of his base just funneled into the base gate by Shy, and this should be the win here for CJ Entis with this Baron expression. Caught out, unburrowed on, double kill for Shy. Frozen, the last man standing, his pink tickle beam not going to affect Shy in the least. And Coco curves it around the Nexus for some style points at the end. CJ will take the series two to one. Just good play from CJ. You have to question the draft from IM. That last final spark in particular looked like it was a heal beam rather than <laughs> any sort of damaging ability onto Shy and deserve a victory. And it's worth noting IM didn't have anything to play for. And kind of tell it by just nodding to the crowd, locking in the fan favorite Lux, but the Lux was the death knell and just basically got uh, eliminated in mid lane at every opportunity, whereas Coco, he's on the Azir, so you know he was really trying. Yeah, that was uh, that was solid from CJ. They had the advantage right from the level one play that was made in the top side, where the vein fell so far behind. Mad Life coming out again with a, just another awesome game there. Thresh, it's one of those things that needs to be accounted for.